Oh my. Hello, hello. Hello. How's everybody doing today? I need to bring up my, uh... I need to bring up my streamer stuff. I need to bring up my streamer stuff. <laughs> Hello. Man, there's... There's almost, like, too much stuff to even probably go over in one stream today. There's so many different things that I've been looking at over the last few days. Honestly, I was on the fence on whether or not to even get, like, go live today. Just because I was, uh... Man... I was, like, I was in the video mood. Because there's, like, a couple other things that I wanted to cover. Because, like, I made a video yesterday. And then I started looking into some other stuff and then like you guys know how it is all of a sudden i start diving into like twitter threads then reddit threads oh my god i forgot about the reddit threads i need to make sure i make a note of that where's my thing at there's all kinds of different like discussions that are going around right now about all kinds of different things so much is happening in the world of video games um let me bring this up Oh, that's definitely not what we want. Let me know if the music is too loud. I always like to have a little bit of something, you know, something, something going on in the background. A little something, something going on in the background, I don't mind. I have to bring that up on the other one. All right, there we go. I can at least leave it up over here. I'm so I'm so disorganized when it comes to making notes and stuff like that for videos and things that I'm working on because uh uh I don't know, ADD, I guess. <laughs> One of the two. One of the two. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's, uh... Did you see the Destiny 2 pre-order thing? Oh, God. Do I want to see this? Destiny 2 pre-order. Oh, are you talking about how fans are debating allegedly poor Final Shape pre-orders? Here's the thing, man. Like, I don't... My 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 knowledge when it comes to Destiny 2 specifically is relatively uh is relatively limited. Like I played it when it first came out and into I think its first like couple expansions and then set it down after that. I returned later. I think last year I was playing it a little bit. Um but yeah, I don't know. It just uh it just became too Destiny 2 just became too segregated for me. There was too much, too many pieces of content all over the place in that game. And it became really difficult for me to try to track like what I needed to purchase, what I didn't need to purchase. And the minute games start doing that to me is the minute that I walk away. It's it's the minute I just walk, I just give up. I'm like, dude, if I can't figure out, you know, I, I, I can... <laughs> How do you do a worse job than Final Fantasy 14 at letting players figure out how to buy your game or what they need to buy from your game? That's the question that I have. Hello, Shinru, Maester, Kyle, Gloomy, Lord Wise, Subtopia, Shiva. Uh, I wanted to try it, but I heard onboarding is awful. Onboarding on that game is absolutely horrid. Wheel of Time. Nobody. Yeah, no, um... So, like, once you get into it, like, the grind is actually pretty fun. Because the thing is, is that when it comes to Destiny, like, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is always really good. Because the game plays well. It's made by the people that made Halo. So, of course, like, the game's gonna play well. And usually when you have that one thing taken care of, for the most part, the rest of your experience is pretty good. 
but they've just done such a horrible job at everything else. Uh, just like content pacing, uh, how they've priced everything out, how they've separated everything. Like, I'm sorry, but it just doesn't make any sense to me to sell dungeons as a completely separate piece to your main campaign and your raids and things like that. Uh, same thing goes for like, <laughs> like what's the irony in that you sell your anniversary like edition DLC? That should be a, that should be a celebration of the achievements that the game has made, a celebration with the community, but instead you go and charge them for it? Like, oh my, man, man. That's just crazy to me. I uh, found some of your videos in my recommendations, so I clicked, watch them and sub subscribe. You bring up some good points in your videos. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, they haven't done a bad job. They've maximized return on investment. Welcome to modern gaming. See, but the funny thing is, and this is going to be, I mean, we're going to kind of talk about this here in a minute and I'll kind of go into it. But um, I think that slowly but surely that mindset is leading to them losing money faster than they were gaining it. I think at one point in time, they were gaining money pretty sick, pretty crazy. Uh, Helldivers 2 over last epoch. Um, I mean, I've been grinding last epoch hard, Selquist, over like the last four or five days, something like that. I don't know how, like, how long I've actually been going at it. Um, I'm well into the monoliths. I'm level 80. I, you know, I still have a lot of like grinding and farming to do, but I'm just taking, uh, I'm just taking a little bit of a break today, and I feel like playing on something, um, something a little bit more engaging. Uh, prioritizing short term over long term. Yeah, so that's one of the that's one of the things that I think is actually going to lead to a lot of these companies losing money. And the funny thing is, is that I brought this up. <laughs> you could say that I am a Sia of the future. I brought this up in a video of mine that was called Baldur's Gate 3 was a wake up call. And in that video, one of the things that I discussed is that there are you know, that Larian Studios, one of the things that they did, one of the reasons why the game, you know, became so popular is because it was respecting people's time and money. And that I felt like there was just, uh, lately, I have felt like there has been more and more consumer dissatisfaction when it comes to the games that we've been kind of fed over the last few years. And I think people are just growing exhausted of seeing the same shit over and over and over again. And at one point in time, you get tired of vanilla ice cream and you want to go have some chocolate. <laughs> you want to go have something else. And I think that's what's happening right now. I think that, you know, they mind or they, uh, um, they drain the well, so to say. They just kept pushing and pushing and pushing until, you know, they got a bunch of money. Good for them. And then they expanded because that's what they're doing, right? Yeah, I, yeah, we're... Well, yeah, that's probably true. We're just done. Yeah, I think we are. I think we are. Which, like, I even saw a conversation with the developers from... Uh, I even saw a conversation with the developers uh, for Helldivers 2, where there were people that were, like, whining and complaining, saying that they want... Uh, they want PvP in Helldivers 2. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And then the, the CEO is like, we're never putting that in our game because we don't, we think it will add like a, a toxic element to the game. So then what they go and do is they comment back and say, oh, look, another developer that's afraid to put PVP in their game. I'm like, what? Like, I'm trying to understand. Stupid's really hard to understand. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I get frustrated with it. I get frustrated with it, man. I do. Like. One of the things that I have a real problem with, and it, and it comes with streaming as well, is like sometimes people want to like pop into my chat and want to argue with me on some stuff. And while I love being able to have a debate, so most of the times people bring up some stupid shit that I have to try to wrap my mind around. And I'm just wondering how they even came to the conclusion that they did. So when I see something like this dude telling the developer of Helldivers 2, that, oh, look, it's another dev that's afraid to put PvP in their game. So sad to see. And I'm sitting here like, what 
is there half of your brain missing? Were you in a car accident? Were you born this way? Did your parents drop you? Did you drink bleach on accident at one point? Because from my perspective, when I'm looking across the industry, I think it's every other damn game that we see is a first person shooter or competitive shooter or something like that. Look at the most popular games that are still played today. Some of the most popular games are still competitive shooters. Are you trying to act like there's not enough of them? What are you talking about? There's more than enough. The entire market is saturated with competitive shooters. Like, <laughs> what is going on? What? Another dev afraid to make the exact same thing that everybody else makes. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you have any more coffee left? Not very much. I have to make some more later. Uh, people are dumb, individual is not. Eh, sometimes. Games are not meant to enjoy for everyone, to each their own. Don't want to play a game without PvP, don't... Yeah, you know what, I have the same kind of... Same kind of stand when it comes to things like that. Though I think there are games that deserve to... That deserve or need to have some flexibility and... Maybe do need to kind of follow more established norms. Not saying that that's what they all need to do, obviously. I, I wouldn't want that because otherwise I wouldn't... Uh... <laughs> I wouldn't have all the great games that I've been playing lately. But there are certain edge cases where there are games that should follow some some like established norms that would make their game better. But the cases for that are few and far in between. Helldivers 2 is not for me and that's okay. Yes, it is. Yes. And you have far... Really good example of this. Do you guys remember this conversation? Back when Baldur's Gate 3 released, how many people were crying online that it wasn't an action RPG? Oh, you guys would have so much more sales. Really? Because I just saw that they sold over 10 million copies. <laughs> yeah, honestly, Baldur's Gate 3 not having PvP ruined it for me. Kyle, you didn't play it the right way. You can kill your friends. You can kill your party. You can kill everybody. <laughs> I don't know if it's a hot take, but generally or genuinely, we believe we need um, a renaissance. I think that's what you're saying. Renaissance of easy and non-competitive games to reset the competitive brain rot mentality. So there's a lot of different things that kind of come into play with that, to be honest. Um... I think that overall, what the brain rot mentality goes far deeper than a lot of people realize. It's not just as simple as that. I think that like the way that games have been made over the last few years, especially by AAA studios, is that, you know, we're so trained to try to play games in the most optimized way possible so that we don't waste any of our time because you know some of these like reward paths are so long that you have to pick the most optimized way to play the game to be able to try to extract as much enjoyment out of it but then you lose sight of the enjoyment and the only thing that you're doing is playing the game like a machine like it's a damn job and i think one of the reasons why many of the games lately have been getting more popular and be been uh being more enjoyed widely is because they don't they kind of go against that Metagaming, I hate it. Yeah, and the thing is, is that, you know, that's not just, that's a player mentality, but that's a player mentality that has kind of been programmed into us. Uh, where, that's one of the things where I really loved, I, obviously I've been playing a lot of Last Epoch over the last few days. And one of the things that I really liked about Last Epoch is that unlike Diablo 4 and unlike Path of Exile, you can easily just pick up the game and play never look at a guide never look at a build or anything like that you can look at the character look at its skills and think to yourself hmm this is what i would like to do and guess what it'll probably work like it's probably not going to be the best but it probably won't be the worst and chances are if you do make something that's the worst you're you know the game's forgiving enough that you can change it on the fly and not have any problems and there's not a lot of games that offer that kind of experience anymore really Yeah, that's what I meant. Games that are designed to perpetuate uh, this gameplay style. Yeah, and it it, it also it also goes into 
like I don't think a lot of these developers realize that making competitive games in the ways that they have or making games in a way that you know we're looking for the most optimized way to possibly play our games ends up creating a really toxic environment for the community which in the end only it's only going to make the game suffer you know what I mean because you're going to have players that are just either going to not want to be part of those video game communities. They're not going to want to take part in discussions on Reddit, on Twitter, wherever, make YouTube YouTube videos or whatever. You know what I mean? But, yeah. But, you know what the funny thing is? It, and <sighs> Games don't even have to... Um, the thing is, is that you even see some of this in communities that are like adjacent to these kind of games as well. It's not even just limited to the games that have competitive, uh, competitive environments. You see people adopting the same kind of mentality in games that don't have a competitive atmosphere. And that's crazy. That's crazy. What's up, Insanity, Insanity Pepper? There's already people in, uh, in Helldivers 2 talking about kicking randoms out. And I'm, I'm planning on talking about that. Uh, I got a, I have a video coming out tomorrow where I kind of discuss that a little bit, but yeah, yeah, of course you're going to have that. I easily, easily see that. What's up, CC? Um, yeah, because the mentality is per perpetuated and it turns into a, in, into peer pressure. Yeah, and you see plenty of it, man. You see plenty of it. And, and it's sad to see. It really is. Especially when you're starting to see stuff like that crop up in a community that is so... I'm going to tell you what, man. I, the outside of outside of some more recent developments the hell divers 2 community is one of the most positive and supportive and just like really cool friendly communities that i've seen pop up on the internet and it's been such a breath of fresh air it's such a breath of fresh air people are always looking to play with one another people are always joking around and having a good time they want you even got a bunch of people that are normally playstation fans that are you know totally all for the game coming to xbox not to say that you don't have people that don't want it to go to xbox as well not that it even will or anything like that but you get what i'm saying but you know that goes to show like a shift in mentality that's well born from the actual game itself because the game is just so damn good and the developers are doing their best to try to you know bring that out in a community and i think that's something that's really important I think it, I think it, uh, I think it goes overlooked. In fairness, you can waste people's time and, and, uh, in fairness, you can really waste people's time in Helldivers 2 if you go into a level or seven to nine difficulty with garbage, with a garbage loadout. Um, so what? It's a video game. I, 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 I don't know how to say it any better than that. Like, I, I, to be honest, like some dude comes in and he's he's in a higher level difficulty. Is it going to be kind of annoying that he's bringing the team down or something like that? Yeah, sure. But, you know, communicate with them if you can. Talk with them if you can. Or if you see that as too big of an issue and you're trying to play the game as optimized as you possibly can. And, you know, you're, you're not okay with, you know, failing a mission. You're not okay with, you know... I guess having your time wasted from you know whatever whatever the player's perspective is then you know get a squad together and make sure that's the squad that you play with uh, or, or make sure that you're just playing with you know like-minded people good morning man i am commuting to work western australia great to catch you streaming loving the videos lately thank you man appreciate it gearheart um, you get what you deserve when you play on public, really good and bad. Yeah, I mean you're gonna get a mix, and sometimes you're gonna sometimes you're gonna meet people that you end up becoming friends with. Uh, I use this as an example all the time, uh, though it's been you know quite a few years since I've met anybody in a lobby. But that's just because like internet culture and video games has kind of shifted over the years, where we kind of prefer private chat to public chat more and more as years go on. Um, and not to say that there aren't games that have you know popular public chat or anything like that. Uh, I think Helldivers 2 does a really good job at trying to bring people into, you know, 
into a more social environment with their game. But I look at uh, my buddy Mark, the one that I do the podcast with on Sundays, and bro, uh, we met on Call of Duty World at War or something like that. Is there that or was Gears of War 1? The first Gears of War release, I think maybe we were playing, Matt. We lost the creek in Drapner. We need bodies. I'm I'm going to the front lines today. Today we're fighting bots. Bots and only bots. Those fucking toasters are getting fried. I just want to spread managed democracy with good people. Hey, there's plenty of people to do it with. Find and reinforce your community, uh, your community play with like-minded gamers. You can enjoy the best part of gaming. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, is that like, even if you go and you look at like the, um, I don't know, I, I'm one of these people. I don't really participate. I'm not a participator. I'm a lurker. All right. I'm like, I don't know. Do you guys, any of you guys like this? I'm a lurker. I don't post anything. Okay. I just lurk. And, you know, you, you, if, if you lurk and you look at like the, uh, or let me bring this up real quick. If you're just like lurking, you know what I mean? My bad. My bad. Good now? Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so it, uh, yeah, it's one of those things, man, where like I, um, uh, I had to reset my computer the other day. I had to do a full like Windows re Windows reinstall, and uh, a lot of my settings got screwed up as a result of that. So, yeah, there's that whole thing. So anyway, what I was gonna say is like if you're talking about like a really positive community, you can see it reflected in anywhere that like I like to lurk in a lot of different places. One of the places I like to lurk, I like to look at like the community tabs for uh, for like Steam games that I'm I'm playing, and you're you're seeing like you're all you're seeing a ton of engagement. On, on a Steam community tab of people just posting memes and stuff. I watched these guys the other day, news on the front lines, super funny. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I was actually a little bit upset about this because I had this idea and I was gonna do this and then now I'm not, so they ruined it for everybody. So make sure you guys let them know that they ruined it for everybody. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So you're seeing a lot of a lot of positivity just even with it. And to be honest with you, like like Steam community tabs, usually not all that positive. Usually not all that positive. Uh, did, 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 did you see the comment on Steam that we should kick newbies? Yeah, yeah, I talked about that a little bit before. You should reach out for a cameo as a reporter on the ground. <laughs> I could do it. I could do a news. I could do a newscaster voice. This is Legendary Drops on the Super Earth News Network, today at 5. The Ministry, the ministry of Truth is said that there are far too many dissidents and they need to be quelled. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of funny moments and videos on YouTube. Yeah, that's why I've really been enjoying a lot of that stuff. I've been really enjoying a lot of like the meme videos and stuff like that. 
It's like largely one of the reasons why I'm probably just gonna keep memeing with thumbnails and stuff for uh for hell divers because it's just too damn fun. Super pog. Super pog. Um actually do you know what? Speaking of like, did you guys see the stuff that was going on with Baldur's Gate 3? I haven't really looked into that at all. I actually want to look at that. Like, I talked about it in the Discord the other night, but I didn't really actually look into it at all. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Eh, all right. There we go. I wouldn't even know about the negative stuff with Helldivers. I don't follow the game on Reddit or other sources. You're not really going to see a lot of negativity on the Reddit, to be honest. I've been on there quite a lot. There's really a... It's relatively positive. Mostly just memeing. Mostly just memeing. I haven't actually, I haven't actually played any. I haven't played any Helldivers. Uh, well, I played a little bit of Helldivers last week. Not a whole lot though. Cause I had to get ready. Cause I was, I wanted to, I wanted to play all of, uh, I wanted to play as much last epoch as I could. Cause I wanted to be able to have a pretty solid understanding about the game before I try to make a video or cover it. Well, let's not have a solid understanding. I have over like almost 200 hours in the game. So I've been playing it in early access. I watched a video from, I think, Juice Head that went over the BG3 update that introduced a lot of glitches. Uh, what BG thing? Are, uh, yeah, so, um, uh, so this came out, this came out yesterday. Let's read this real quick. <laughs> Let's get the skinny. Let's get the skinny from IGN. Uh, where's my uh, thing at here? All right, there we go. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 dev warns community about threats and toxicity over mod support. Baldur's Gate 3 developer Larian Studios called the game's community to cease what it's called threats and toxicity over mod support, insisting that conversations around new features take time. Ever since Baldur's Gate 3 came out in August 2023, players who use mods have been frustrated having to uninstall, reinstall, update, and then rejuggle their mods every time a new patch is released. So, last week's announcement that official mod support is on the way has seen uh, was seen as positive. However, it seems the vocal minority within the community has taken things too far. In a series of tweets, Larian's director of publishing, Michael Douse, said in order... Uh, in order for the game to continue with a healthy relationship with its community, the threats need to stop. Uh, we'll be taking uh, 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 we'll be we'll be taking an in-depth look. Uh, oh my God! If I could speak for once, we'll be talking in depth about what our mod support will look like soon. Dow said, "We've been working uh, we've been working on it since launch. As uh, as always, we'll discuss this with our community." Threats and toxicity against our devs and community teams will only harm the conversation. Please stop that. This game, uh, this game, this is a game that went from around 2 million players to way over 10 million in a very short space of time. So it's natural that the conversation becomes muddier and complex, but in order to maintain the same level of dialogue, we need people to understand that these conversations take time. Uh, we can't do it all without the dedicated community and uh, community community teams that work to untangle the giant web of noise into something that we can actually work with for the benefit of everybody. If you really, if you really want to try to try to know things about the game, don't chip away at, uh, at the people who connect us all. Yeah. So, and, and he's even says here, 99.9% .9 of our community are the absolute best. And because of them, thankfully the team is able to persevere, but I suppose it was inevitable that uh, when you have a city, uh, there are a few bag, bad eggs will start a fire. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's sad to see, but to be honest with you, like when it comes to modders and I've seen this, I've seen this like super prevalent, by the way, it's super prevalent. It's in the modding community. Cause they're absolutely right. Like basically ever since the game was released once, um, you had like two groups of people. You had the modders and then you had just the regular players. And basically what kept happening is, is like the regular players would be like, hell yeah, new new patch is coming in. Uh, they're, you know, improving, you know, all these other things. They're adding in some quality of life. They're allowing us to be able to, you know, switch party members on the fly. 
uh they're making it where we can you know recruit minthara without having to you know do a bunch of bad stuff you know they, they gave all of these different solutions to things they kept adding more and more quality of life things and the general community applauded it everybody was super happy about it the modding community was like no boo boo my mods my mods my my half my half naked Astarian, Astarian, sorry my half my half naked Astarian, my and it's like i get where they're coming from because i understand that it's frustrating that they're playing in a game that they're really you know they're playing a game that they're really enjoying and they're tailoring that game to enjoy it the way that they want to by using mods however without any official mod support you can't be upset that every single time a patch comes out something breaks because there's no official support for mods they appreciate the mods they appreciate the modders but at the same in the same breath there's no official support for it so you can't freak out when things stop working because well there's no official support for it yet and i find this like really funny actually now that i think about it because there's so many so many games that do not have official mod support nor even recognize the modders or don't even want people modding their games to begin with and they don't complain about every single update they don't threaten the people that are making the game however the studio that does appreciate the modding community and is going to give them modding support those are the ones that have the toxic eggs that are trying to message the developers and say crazy shit to them what kind of fucking world is this man the people that actually want to make a good game for you and support the things that you do and you trying to have the experience that you want to have you know those are the guys that you go after and attack not you know no, but you know those other games that you have jesus man People are just so unhinged, man. People are entitled. That's really what it comes down to. A lot of the modders, it's just entitlement. That's really what it is. And the and and correct me if I'm wrong, but you could just turn off updates, right? I mean, you could just play the game without updating it if you wanted to. I'm pretty sure you can. I don't man, maybe you can't. Cuz I know it does have to open up the launcher no i'm pretty sure modders need more freedom they need liberty is what they need what game are we talking about oh baldur's gate 3 but i mean this is something that we still see persist in other gaming communities as well man but i like you know i i was you know we were having a bit of a we're having a little bit of a debate about this in the discord the other night and you know one of the things is is that like i i just wish that there was just a little bit more repercussions for people that issue threats online and i'm not saying like throw their ass in jail or anything like that but the thing is is that you know it's like my dad always said people always like to talk shit till they get punched in the mouth and i feel like there's a whole lot of people out there that have never been punched in the mouth <laughs> there's a whole lot of people out there that are not afraid to say anything that they want because they've never had any real pushback in their life it's real easy for them to hop on the internet and get mad on their keyboard and say some heinous shit until all of a sudden st somebody's standing right in front of them about to uh, fucking knock their ass out liberty that's right Bring the modders to the front lines. Yeah, we can use them as fodder, use them as shields, if anything else. Um, Your dad got that from Mike Tyson. My dad did get that from Mike Tyson. My dad's a big boxing fan. But I'm not giving the credit to Mike Tyson. I'm giving credit to my dad. <laughs> Uh, 100 hours isn't solid enough, LD. <sighs> I don't even think I have 100 hours. Do I? I lose track of time with my game sometimes. I need to put more. I need to put more hours into Grand Blue Fantasy Relink too. Ah, fuck! And then Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out in two days. Oh man, I'm not gonna lie, guys. It's hard to keep up. It is actually really hard to keep up. One of the things that I've learned from, um, so like, I mean, we, we've talked about this a few times, but I realize I get some new viewers all the time. Back in 
back in December, I lost my job. Start of the year, I thought, you know what? Let's actually try to give YouTube a full shot. The YouTube channel was doing pretty decent at the time. So I said, you know what? Let's try to get a job in gaming. Let's do some gaming journalism. Uh, and th now all of a sudden I realized like, I don't even play games the same way anyway, anymore. Or like normally like you sit back and chill to play a game. Instead, I find myself like overanalyzing, like critically analyzing games and stuff like that. So it's like, and there's so many different ones that I want to follow. I think that's the other problem too, is that like, you know, I realize I don't have to cover every single game that's out there, but I do want to cover the games that I enjoy or the games that I like. But do you have any idea how hard it is to try to cover Baldur's Gate 3, Grand Blue Fantasy, Relink, Last Epoch, now uh, Helldivers 2, as well as, you know, anything that goes on with Pal World, like you slip on the news with all these different things. like. It's one of those uh it's one of those things where you have to just like kind of hyper focus on one of them or maybe two at most and then you know just kind of chill out. Uh let's see. There's only so much space in your brain, you know what I mean? Uh last I remember about the uh about those jobs was a bit uh like working man and didn't post videos for a week and then no job yeah and that's the other thing too like you also can't take like uh especially like well i mean especially at this stage for me right like i'm i'm just i'm just a baby i'm just a baby <laughs> and as such i can't take a break i can't take time off man i can't i have to keep pushing taking a week off is like basically just throwing it all in the bin i hate to say it like that but when it comes to like youtube and shit that's how it is YouTube's super unforgiving. If you don't post super regularly, they just fucking, you just, they just take you out back. You're like old, old yeller at that point. Don't post something for like a week or two. They think you retired. They think you retired. A baby with a beard and mustache. Yeah, fucking born like this. You weren't? <laughs> what was I looking at? Oh, that's right. Ah, fuck. I only got 50 hours in. It's pushing a boulder up to a hill. As soon as you stop pushing, it rolls back down to the ground. Yeah, and there's only another roll down on the other side, too. Hi, LD. Discovered your content. Great stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Moisturize. Moisturizer, motherfucker. What do you... You think I need to moisturize? Look at this skin. Look, look at this hair. Shit. I am the moisturize. I am the moisture. I can't grow a beard. I'm too Indian. I couldn't grow a beard for a really long time. Like, I, I mean, uh, oh, shit. I couldn't grow a beard for a really, really long time. Not because I couldn't actually grow one, but because I was actually, uh, I wasn't allowed to because of the work that I did. When you work in, um, so like for the last six, seven years or something like that, I've worked in the oil industry, traveling the country, working at like oil refineries and working at uh, power plants and stuff like that. And uh, when you're working there, you're, you can always potentially be exposed to toxic gases. And as such, you have to be able to, at any point, put on an SCBA, which is like a, an air pack. Uh, it looks like what divers use or what firefighters use when they go into a building. It's actually exactly that is what it is. And um, you had to stay clean, clean shaven. Sucked. Sucked. Six, seven years of only ever being able to have five o'clock shadow on the weekend. <laughs> That's about it. After that, it's gone. After that, it's gone. Blue collar, right? Yeah, I mean, most of my life I've been blue collar. So I've only been making YouTube videos as a full-time job for two months. Need that seal. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I've only been I've only been doing uh like full time YouTube for like two two years or something like that. 
I had facial hair, hair, facial hair until it started coming in white. Back. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that day. I don't know. Maybe I'd look good. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll look good peppered. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. You know, like, so I brought this up. I was talking about this on the podcast a little bit. And just speaking of like work and stuff like that. One of the things that um, I use Filmora and I don't really like it, to be honest. I'm probably going to switch over to uh, Adobe instead at one point. I just haven't done it yet. I hate that all of, I hate that all like editing software. I hate that like all software nowadays is all subscription based. You can't just buy a damn you can't just buy a damn program anymore. How long did it take you to become full time? Well, it that's a DJ. That's not really how it worked. <laughs> that's not how it worked. Um, I'm not really. I mean, like, I'm I'm, I'm not gonna like give you a, a a window into my like financial life or anything like that. But I'm not at the point where I'm necessarily like making a stable income. Content creation is not stable at all. I give you a really good example of this. I released a Hell Divers 2 video. It's almost at I released a Hell Divers 2 video. It almost made or it almost got 500,000 views. The thing is popping off. It's killing it. My second one has 60,000 views. There's nothing stable about that. So like it's always kind of like a roller coaster where you're like, "Dude, I got it. We're doing good. We're right." And it's like, "Ah, wait a minute." <laughs> wait. Where are you going? <laughs> Why are you over there? Um, but with that said, uh, you know, there is stability to be found. So I, I think I'll, I think I'll probably be able to, I, personally, I think I, I can probably figure this thing out. But, um, when it comes to, um, like a lot of people that try YouTube or try like streaming and stuff will be like, well, how long did it take for it to be like a full-time job? And it's like, well, I mean, that always depends on the person, how, what kind of audience they reach, how many people they reach, whether or not they can remain stable, things like that. Um, for me, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to leave my job because now I can just do YouTube full time. No, I lost my job. <laughs> so I, it was either go get a new one. Actually, it wasn't go get a new one. This is what it is. I'll tell you guys. I had two choices. I guess technically three, but the third one was way more difficult. I had two, uh, I had Three choices, okay. One, go back to travel work because that's the easiest way for me to get right back into making income. If I did that and went back into doing like travel work construction, well, then I wouldn't be able to do YouTube at all anymore. I'd have to throw away all the hard work that I did, all the fun that I was having, all of that. It just wouldn't be able to happen. I would go back to working, you know, 12, 14 hour days, seven days a week, for three to four months on end and then taking like a month off. Um, or the other option was, why don't you take a gamble and try to work for yourself for once and try to see if you can make YouTube work. Try to see if you can make streaming work. Try to actually work in the industry that you've wanted to work since you were a kid. I mean, I went into, I went to, I went into like game design twice and dropped out because I fucking absolutely hated programming. I just didn't have the attention span for it. And uh Yeah, so that those are the those are the two options that I was picking between. It was either go back to travel work or, you know, really give this a shot. And the way that I looked at it is, is like I, I'm in a relatively safe position. I can go right back into construction anytime. If this doesn't work, that would suck. But, you know, it is what it is. And then I would just find another way to survive and wouldn't be too bad because I have plenty of work experience in construction. I've a lot of work experience in um like retail customer service a bunch of other different things as well project management now digital marketing and i have a marketing degree so you know i looked at this as a like and the, uh, obviously the other third option was just find a different type of career path and i was like well that just seems fucking boring that just seems boring DaVinci Resolve is the best free open source. Yeah, I've heard that from a lot of people, but it's also relatively limited. Personally, I kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have a safety net. I can always go back to just working in construction, which would suck in comparison, but at the same time, it's still good money and you can definitely make a living. Insurance is really good. 
stock options or not stock options but like retirement plans are still pretty solid and stuff like that too so do tell me about it i was coming home uh into a home studio with all the dawes i want that monthly dude don't even get me started on dawes that's like the whole reason why like like i don't do people ask me this all the time they're like why don't you do like music on your channel and i'm like because i don't want to pay for fucking music software <laughs> that's it i don't want to have to pay for the i don't want like i think the only thing that i have I don't even know where I, I don't like I, I have I have a I have one of those like smaller pieces of hardware that you can plug in to play music and stuff like that but like I bro like I don't I just don't want to do it to be honest that and I don't know if you guys are like this does anybody help does anybody else have this like <sighs> when I pick something that I want to be creative at or that I'm having fun being creative at I lose all my other creativity like it, it's it feels like a damn superpower it feels like a superpower like i lose i lose whatever strength i had elsewhere as an example i used to be like a halfway decent artist pretty good not bad i used to be a pretty solid artist i loved painting i loved drawing um and then i picked up a guitar i don't i haven't drawn in years haven't drawn in years i started picking up youtube started making videos learning how to edit learning how to make thumbnails learning how to write scripts and stuff like that i have not been playing very much guitar <laughs> like i i just like it, it's like the ability and the free your freedom just or not your freedom your uh um your creativity just gets exhausted in the one areas that you really try to like focus all of that energy into and yeah it just doesn't go anywhere else um love that you have dos 2 soundtrack in the background for the music on stream i love having the dos soundtrack on here especially when it pops into is there any coming up oh man all the like tambura versions and also the basuri versions of any of the songs from divinity original sin 2 bangers absolute bangers absolute bangers i went for, straight from not being able to grow a beard to having white hairs bro jesus i had one of those moments the other like a few like a week ago like, cause I thought I was just like, I'm like, no way I'm getting like a gray patch. I'm like, there's no fucking way, no fucking way. And it wasn't, it was just like, uh, like not like pomade, but whatever it is. It's like stuff that I use to keep this, uh, keep this beautiful weave, you know, looking fresh, looking fresh. Same on one trick pony. And move on to the next trick once I'm done or find find a new incentive. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this, though. Like, YouTube... Well, I mean, I, music helped me for a long time. But I'm also one of those people that's, like, a fucking dreamer. I'm a dreamer. What can I say? I, like... I, I was one of those people that always would come up with a business idea. Or I would come up with... Uh, or, like, back when it was, like... When I was in a band, it was, like, we're going to get signed. We're totally going to travel. And my band was not bad. We weren't bad. We weren't bad. My bandmates were a bunch of assholes, but we weren't bad. We weren't bad. We fall, we fell apart because they were assholes, but we were pretty good. And I kept us on course and I had us on a really good track for success. Like I knew what we needed to do to be successful. And I kept us doing those things and it worked. And we were right there at the door. And then, you know, addictions and things like that started to pop up with some of the band members. And then things kind of fell apart with, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um... So I, I think that hopefully I'm doing the same thing. Uh, I think I'm doing the same thing here. Epic lull beast with the super chat, the $20 super chat. This guy is a God. This is a God among men. Hey, found your channel and love your stuff. I turned down, I turned down jobs because they require a clean shave. 
wouldn't do it. It's been really cool to see that you're doing well and good coming in and it's well and is well deserved. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. That goes a long way, man. I really appreciate that. It is actually like it's been really, really cool. It's been really, really cool over the last like Man, over the last, like, since I, since I, so basically, since I started going full-time on YouTube, which was on January 1st, there's been such a massive positive reception from people where they're just like, more, more, give me more content. You're doing great, dude, you're doing great. And I'm like, man, it's, <laughs> you guys, <laughs> they like me. They really, really like me. <laughs> It's like married with children. It is like married with children, like genuinely. All right, I'll give you guys, I'll give you guys a really good example. I'll give you guys a funny story, okay? So we went, uh, this is one of the things that led to the band imploding. So we had this guitarist that was in the band. Didn't have any of his own equipment. He had a guitar, it was a piece of shit. He had a guitar and then outside of that, he'd always use my equipment. Never, you know, he worked a full-time job, you know? He, he did his own thing, never, took any of his own money and went and bought him any type of equipment. When we started selling merch, he thought that we should be using that money to buy him guitar equipment. He used my stuff almost all the time. That's all he ever did. He'd show up to practices late. He would drink too much. It would be all of these different things that would just be horrible. I mean, just, it just, it just not, it's just toxic, making for a toxic environment. We go to record our EP or whatever you want to call it, like our, our pre-release or something like that. There were a couple of labels that wanted to, you know, hear what we sounded on recording and we went ahead and did that, you know, got to do that thing, man. Got to do that thing. So we go, we find a really cool, really cool dude. Dude was in a, uh, a traveling, uh, um, he was in a, a national act. I cannot remember what the name of his band was, but traveled all over the world. Uh, multiple albums, you know, big time metal band. Uh, and he had his own home studio near us. And we got, we got to record out of his basement and he kind of helped us produce the, you know, produce the tracks. And the, you know, we were paying him by hour. So, you know, we only had, we had very limited funds. We didn't have unlimited money to get this recording done. And we get there, you know, drummer goes in, he records his track. I go, I lay down my track. Bassist goes, lays down his track. Vocalist lays down his track. The only other thing that we need is lead guitar and uh, and and whatever other like rhythm sections that he would add in on some of our songs, but they were all songs that I had written. Uh, I did not write his parts. I only wrote my part and then I wrote that with the drummer in tandem and that's you know how, how most of the songs were made. And this bum didn't show up. Uh, he didn't show up either day because we came back the next day to record more tracks, uh, at least get like the, ba like just get the, uh, you know, get our sections done. And then he was just going to have to come in on that last day that we were there and lay down all of his stuff for all the songs. And he didn't show. So eventually the dude at the studio was just like, hey man, we got to get this done. So are you guys just not going to do the second second guitar recording? And I said, well, I, he's not going to show up. He's like, well, you can you do it? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I wrote the songs, but I don't know what he plays. He's like, I don't know, man, just fucking. He's just like, just I don't know, improv. I'm like, all right, fine, sure. I sit down and it's just like me and the, me and this like producer. And he's like, oh, man, you should do something like this. And then I and then I, you know, I do that. And the tracks came out sounding way better than they ever have live. Like it almost sounded like we took the songs and the songs are never completed. And then that day in the studio, they were completed and damn, did it sound good. It sounded so good. Some of these like lead tracks and stuff that were on there just like completely transformed the songs. This dude shows up as we're leaving, freaks out. What do you mean you recorded for me? What do you mean? This is what I'm talking about. He just thinks he, he he thinks he owns this band. Blah, blah, blah. Like starts losing his shit. And I'm like sitting there like looking at him like, bro, where were you? We called you. We texted you over the last two days and you didn't show up. This. This 
This dude goes, I was hung over. <laughs> he didn't say it like that, though. He said it like, I was hung over. <laughs> like, we're supposed to feel bad. Like, we're supposed to feel bad. Absolutely, absolutely out of my mind. And I remember, like, me and the drummer and the bass is just sitting there looking at him with our mouths open, like... <laughs> what? What is this? I remember one of the other times, too, we were at, like... We were at some weird show. Because, like, I was usually the one that would, like, try to schedule stuff for us. Like, I would try to find venues. I would try to find bands and stuff like that that you know we should go play with because they had similar styles of music we were a metalcore band you know so i didn't really see a point in us playing with these like what i would consider like butt rock more than anything else and <laughs> he booked us a show once and it was at a biker bar and we got booed off stage they didn't want to listen to us because there's a biker bar biker bar didn't want to listen to metalcore they wanted butt rock they didn't want to hear our shit and, 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 and like, I remember us getting into an argument outside of this biker bar. And I'm like, this is the exact shit I'm talking about. I'm like, there are places that we should be and places that we shouldn't be. And he's just like, well, maybe you want to be the lead guitarist. And I'm like, I didn't even know you were the lead guitarist. <laughs> oh, man. He ended up quitting. And then after he quit, for some odd reason, like the, like the, oh, no, two things happened back to back. That's what it is. He quit, which is fine, because we could easily find another guitarist. Honestly, we were just going to take our bassist, which was a way better guitarist than he was a bassist. And he was a sick bassist. Absolutely sick bassist. We had these really cool bass solo lines in some of our songs. So good. So good. Uh, and we could just got another bassist. Wouldn't have been a big deal. And sadly, well, he uh, he ended up getting a... Uh, he, he ended up having um, a, a unplanned child... And as a result, needed to find new work because he also got laid off that same week and then went and started doing bridge painting and just started traveling around doing that. And after that, like, then we were down a guitarist and a bassist. And even though I'm like a super patient guy, I'm like, guys, we can just find other people. It's not a big deal. We already have the songs recorded. We already have, you know, most of the tracks already done. Finding another guitarist and a bassist isn't a big deal. They're a dime a dozen, right? Vocalists and drummers, that's a different story. Uh, that's a hard thing to find. And, uh, yeah, that didn't work. They all, like, everybody, like, all the, the drummer got too impatient. He joined another band immediately. The, the vocalist did the exact same thing. And then after that, I was like, you know what, man? I'm done with bands. I'm never going to do bands again. No more bands. Rurikon. What's up, buddy? Moral of the story, motivation, drive, and passion are priceless. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? Uh, was it rhythm or blues, or did they have both kinds? Thank you for the uh, for the ten for the ten euro for the ten euro space channel five. Appreciate that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I mean, I do still miss that kind of, but at the same time, I'll be honest with you guys. The, that itch, that music itch. Of like performing on stage which i was absolutely is that not euros did i read that wrong a, a lira i don't know it doesn't tell me i don't know what that symbol is don't treat me like this don't treat me like this Pounds? Okay, whatever, man. I don't... Great British pounds. All right. Oh, all right, all right, guys. You know what? I don't really need. It's real money. <laughs> it's is it real money? <laughs> is it real money? But um, one of the things that I will say is this: is that uh, ever since starting YouTube, I now get that same itch that used to get scratched by performing live. The same way here. This is, and uh, honestly, this is much easier to do as well for me. I'm a better talker than I'm a guitarist by any means. Yeah, the first time you get a cr crowd going, it's a religious experience. I will say this. Okay. I don't think that I'll ever be able to have that same kind of feeling unless you're playing music. 
because there is just something wild about seeing a crowd in front of you and they are just feeling they are picking up what you are putting down there is just something absolutely magical a religious experience i think is probably the best way you could describe it because it's like i don't know man i don't know i don't know that shit's crazy uh the funny thing is not being able to find drummers or singers i once had a crappy show where one of the bands was just a drummer and a vocalist with a guitar track on a speaker that's crazy that's crazy actually you know what now that i think about it i play we like back way way back in the day we played a show before where i think there was just a drummer and a no it was a singer and a and a guitarist and then they had like a synth track on a fucking cd player or something like that behind them i don't even know where it was coming from i guess it would have been a cd player it would have been like a mp3 player or something like that you don't like leaving shitty bars at 3 a.m i loved leaving shitty bars at 3 a.m actually not all of them though because like some of the places some of the places from back home were really skimping out on you know free drinks and stuff like that i remember like there was one bar that would just give you coins they'd be like oh here's your drink tokens for playing and it's like you get like three tokens i'm like three beers bro what we played for an hour <laughs> what do you mean three tokens then you get to the good places right the places that like they don't want you to leave and you don't want to leave and you're dragging yourself out of the place at the end of the night man oh boy oh boy my 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 those places are uh yikes um so let's see here all right let's get back into the video games we got video games to talk about you guys distracted me how dare you um so there was something that there's a couple different things that i was i was looking at today i like i like stream because stream gives me a chance um bro all right there we go um i like stream because stream gives me a chance to go over stuff that i'm probably not going to make a video about and I think it's really cool because it gives us an opportunity to kind of like discuss this as a as a crowd, as a community. Um, and I get to hear like div diverse opinions on things and stuff like that. And I'm not going to lie. I don't always, guys, I don't always agree with Mr. Destin Ligiri, but I give credit where credit is due and Homeboy's on fire today. Okay? He is on fire today. So... He's in this, he's been in this discussion all day. Uh, let me bring up my like, my like tweets. So he's been in this discussion all day about, um, let's see here. Uh, the industry, here we go. The industry has been walking towards this for years. There has been a massive shift in digital sales, reliance on battle passes and microtransactions to sustain development out of hand. Retail, hit, uh, retail was hit by COVID and dev costs have been insane 200 to 300 million dollars for a game question mark exclamation mark question mark oh it's that guy bro did i like summon you out of the fucking abyss or what <laughs> so uh are you like beetlejuice or what <laughs> uh uh none of his is to uh, none of is sustainable and unfortunately today is another adjustment caused by a multitude of factors uh that have been set our uh, that have set the entire industry marching towards this point. And, it, and uh, likely more adjustments will have been made, needed through 2024 and beyond. The gaming, com our gaming companies are businesses. They make cold-hearted cold decisions to sustain, but I don't see anyone doing so with glee. The layoffs stink and people are mad, but something had to give eventually. You can't keep, mo you can't keep, you can't keep making $200 million games with either razor uh, razor margin returns or a loss. So, you know, this has been part of an ongoing discussion that I've had on this channel, right? Um, this started all the way back with um, Baldur's Gate 3 was a wake-up call, and then it followed into PAL World as well as now into Helldivers 2. And, you know, one of the things or one of the trends that I've seen that started to develop over the last few years is that players are getting exhausted 
by live service models. And we're also being exhausted by these companies still going back to the same tropes over and over and over again. And today we have studios that have been pumping out really quality games for less money. They're charging us less money. They're also spending less money than many of these companies are with far less resources as like employees, much smaller studios, 100 person teams and things like that, right? And they're outperforming these guys. And this is something that we definitely know for a fact is something that happens with Square Enix because Square Enix, they have like wild sales projections for what they think their games are going to do. And then they fund those games based on those sales projections. And then those sales projections miss. And then they look at that game as if it was a failure. But if, we, if they would have kept that game within its margins, it probably wouldn't have been a, you know, it wouldn't have been a, a black line or a red line for them. You know what I mean? Any idea what the budget was for Helldivers 2? I can assure you it wasn't 200 to 300 million. That only makes sense if you're looking at sustainability. Uh, these companies aren't looking for that. They just want the line to go up. Right. And that's the thing. That's So they want the line to go up. But the problem is that they think if they charge more, that they're going to be able to make that line go up. But this is something that I've said a few times already. I think... Broadly speaking, many of these companies are starting to look at pricing themselves out of customers. And I think when I look at a game like Diablo 4, or I'm trying to think about anything else that's been kind of like recent that's right right up there as well. Um Enshrouded, yeah, don't I I definitely don't need to forget Enshrouded as well. Enshrouded was really good. Um Man, the problem is, is that these games are getting too expensive. And then on top of that, there's so much added monetization that you know that even spending $70 on a game isn't going to give you the quality of service or the full experience of a game. And nine times out of 10, what ends up happening is, is that we pay $70 for what feels like 75% of a game or 70% of a game. We'll say it like that. And while that worked for a little while, I don't think it's going to work for very much longer. And we're starting to grow. Or we're starting to have more distrust for these companies. And who would blame us? Why, why would we expect anything from Activision Blizzard, from EA, from Ubisoft? If we look at those three specifically, I don't expect a damn thing from them because neither of those three companies, outside of edge cases, have done anything to provide a great experience for gamers. The only thing that I ever see coming from those companies anymore is maximized monetization. It has nothing to do with our enjoyment, nothing to do with delivering value to the consumer. It is all blinded by dollars. And I am so thankful that they are failing. I am so happy that they have to watch and sit back as they see a $40 game sell 3 million copies in a few weeks. I am so beyond happy for them to see a Pokemon uh, uh, open world, you know, uh, with guns blow up to 25 million players on a bare bones budget and it doesn't even look like some, you know, massive AAA hit or anything like that. I love to have them watch and see that because it's being thrown back in their face. And I just don't know if they're actually going to learn from it, though. I just don't know if they're going to learn from it. Last E. Last E. <laughs> Hack divers. Bro, Blizzard is so painful, the nostalgia hit hurts my heart. Brocon, I have said this a million times. I will never forgive them for Heroes of the Storm. I will never forgive them for Heroes of the Storm. And then also Diablo 4. Because I'll... I, I got gaslit into Diablo 4, and then I started gaslighting people for Diablo 4. My very first videos on this channel was me gaslighting people about Diablo 4 and how it was going to be great. Now look at me now. I'm bitter. I'm angry. 
<laughs> but I do still have my hairline, so we're all right. <laughs> Diablo 4, the ultimate betrayal. Yeah, that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. Warcraft 3 Reforged. I wasn't a Warcraft guy, so I, I, I don't know. I never got into that. I know that it was really, really bad, but yeah, yeah. What's, what's actually really surprising as well, guys, is like, think about how, um, <laughs> like, how do you go and make Diablo 2 Resurrected, which is a banger. Like, we can't undersell how good Diablo 2 Resurrected is. They did a great job with that. They literally just gave us the game and made it look better. <laughs> that's all. And that's all people wanted from some of their older games. How many YouTubers can I insult? I guess there's three of us in here right now, so I guess there's enough. StarCraft 1 remastered. I didn't know they re remastered StarCraft. I think people at these companies are caught up in the AAA narrative that uh, games need to be $100 million to sell a ton of microtransactions to survive. Uh, then games like $40 you know, sur or Surge or Path 2. Yeah. Last Epoch. Lo last e yeah, but do you know what? So. Ooh. Careful. I'm going to watch out. I was, uh, I was, uh, I almost let some content slip. I got to be careful about that. <laughs> um, You know, one of the things is, is that. Why do they think that they have to spend so much money? And I'm wondering if it's just a, I wonder if it's just a general, genuine lack of creativity from the top brass of these companies where they are so afraid to do anything different because they're afraid that if they do something different, it's going to scare away their investors, which is going to lose them money. I think that's all this is really coming down to. Because we know for a fact, Destin, Rurikon, anybody would probably agree with me. Almost every single one of these studios has the talent to make great games. I think every single one of these studios has the talent. You know for a fact there are some incredibly talented developers at these studios. Incredibly passionate developers that would love to do something unique, fun, and interesting. But at the end of the day... When it comes to these, when it comes to many of these studios that have established IPs, they are so terrified to do anything outside of that IP that they think that's what's going to end up failing. So they think the only way that they can continue to find success is by monetizing the games further and pumping an even bigger budget into whatever that IP is. They're being trained to chase profit. Yeah, yeah. And, and I... I realize that it's not the individual developers. It's not the people at the desk that are programming these games. These guys showed up at these studios to make awesome games because they were probably inspired by some of the games that these studios have made. What's the best example, Rorikon? Counterpoint, maybe Rocksteady should have stuck with the Batman Arkham style. So that's a that's a smoking gun. That's a smoking gun. But here's the thing. So I get where you're coming from with that. And would it have been more pop would it have been more successful? 100 percent Without a shadow of a doubt, it would have been more successful. Just as the next Zelda game is going to be successful. Just as the next Mario game is going to be successful. Um, I would say Halo, but <laughs> that hasn't been true for a long time. Um, but yeah, in a sense, Final Fantasy, they can always go, or, or Square Enix can always go back to the Final Fantasy tree, right? They can always go back there and throw another one of those logs on the fire and it's going to make them some money. Um, whether or not those games are going to be smash hit successes, that's a completely different story. I think there's a, a perfect storm of things that need to happen for a game to really be that iconic and you know that much of a mega release and i think many of these studios think that they have it in them to do these mega releases but 
I just think overall, as time goes on, people just kind of lose taste for some of this stuff. And sometimes that taste comes back because they made bad games. Like, this is gonna be a hot take. I think a lot of people really liked Final Fantasy VII Remake Rebirth as well as Final Fantasy XVI because there was a long history of them making kind of like just decent Final Fantasies. Not banger Final Fantasies, just decent Final Fantasies. The last great Final Fantasy that I played was like... I liked 12. I really liked 12. But 10 was like... Fuck, that game was so good. Oh, it was so good. The music, the story, the everything was so good. And then after that, it's just been kind of like... Ah! I mean... 12 was good. I enjoyed it. I had a really fun time. 13. Lightning Returns. 14. That's, a, that's an MMO. We leave the MMOs out. We leave the MMOs out. We leave the MMO. MMO is a completely different thing. If I had to add, if you asked me what's your favorite Final Fantasy of all time, it's Final Fantasy 14. Of course. But I don't view it as the main titled series. Not like the rest of them because it's a completely different kind of game. Uh, 15 was... 15 was like fun, but it, it's it's just not that banger one. You know what I mean? You can do different stuff, but why Suicide Squad? But I don't. Why would you pick? Why would you pick a like the crazy thing to me is too, is that like. N no, I'm not shooting flack at DC fans, but Marvel properties sell more. Okay. Marvel properties sell more. I'm not saying that Rocksteady needs to do Marvel, but what I'm saying is, is that in Rocksteady's case, with DC being, you know, a little bit harder to sell with, Batman and Superman are like your big key players, okay? Big key players. Suicide Squad doesn't even really do that well. Like, as a property, Suicide Squad is just kind of in the middle. So you took a middle performing property... And then you bolted on a live service model, a looter shooter, which doesn't even make sense in the context of those characters because they have their own fighting styles and stuff like that, even in the comics. <laughs> and then you have a studio that's never made a game like that make that. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? How is there nobody in the room that goes... You know what? That's probably not a good idea. That's, pro that's probably not a good idea. Fifteen was an awful video game, but top tier experience. It made uh, it made me feel every emotion exist. You know, like I, okay, Final Fantasy Fifteen is actually one of like my guilty pleasure games. It wasn't a banger Final Fantasy game, but just rolling around with the boys. Uh, it was good. It was good for that. It was good for that. The combat was just what kind of made me, you know, fall asleep. But at the same time, I do feel like Final Fantasy 15 is, you know, Final Fantasy 15 had to fall on its face for Final Fantasy 7 Remake to run. Because you can see that there's a lot of inspiration from Final Fantasy 15 in Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Which I think that's the same. Is that the same? team i don't think it is actually i'm pretty sure the final fantasy 15 team is the team that went and made uh for spoken which that makes a lot of sense royale edition redeemed the shit out of final fantasy 15 for sure for sure it did eight was your favorite if i okay final fantasy 14 is my all-time favorite but Final Fantasy, or like, I, if I was going to say, like, out of the... But if I'm going to take the MMOs out and just say the mainline series, Final Fantasy VIII's my favorite. I really like Final Fantasy VII Remake, though. Uh, if anyone could make a Superman game work, it'd be Rocksteady. They pulled the Arkham series. Uh, that should have been their next game. Yeah, I mean, I think that probably would have worked for them. I think that probably would have worked for them. Ghost Turtle! Thank you for the sub over on Twitch, man. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. 
I need to bring you guys over here. Oh, dude. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to turn this up on you real quick. This song is just a banger. Oh, yeah. Oh, we jamming this. We jamming this. What's your main on Final Fantasy 14? Uh, I... Okay. Uh, so I tank warrior. I mostly main, at least for, like, savages and ultimates, I main, um... Uh, I main healer. So I'll dance between white mage or sage... I never learned how to play, uh, I never really learned how to play Scholar. Like, I have it leveled up and everything like that. I also main DPS as well. Like, I'll switch. It depends on, like, what my rating, what my rating group is, is like. My rating groups that I've ran with in the past, my last few times that I've ran Savage Tears, I played as Summoner. But, uh, yeah, actually, now that I think about it, the last two times that I've done Savage Tears, I played Summoner throughout the whole, throughout the whole, uh, uh throughout the whole time. But usually, usually I, I play Sage or Healing. Before, it used to be Astrologian until they made the changes in Endwalker. And then I was mad. Because it just kind of, I don't know, just, it's just not the same. I loved having the flexibility of being able to choose, like, which kind of healer I wanted to be. Whether a shield healer or a or a pure healer. Or, like, regen healer is more what, uh... Was it Nocturnal Sect and whatever the other one was? Feel so many so many games focus on live service, uh, checking boxes at the same time. Uh, it's nice that some double A double A games are bangers. But the thing is, is that like you know I've talked about this as well. Live service isn't the reason why we're upset. If a game was a good live service, we would play it. Hell Divers Two is an incredible example of that. It's it's the proof written right out there for them. It has nothing to do with. Um, it has nothing to do with the live service thing. I think players are a bit exhausted of it. However, if it's presented to us in a way that makes sense, makes sense in that, like, I can't remember who it was. I was watching a review. It might have been Skill Up or somebody like that. I'm not really too sure. But I was watching a review, and they talked about how Helldivers 2 makes the battle pass a part of the lore of the game and because it's actually included and it's not some like something outside of the game that it doesn't feel foreign and it doesn't feel weird and it doesn't distract us from the game and they also make the battle pass in the game like a natural progression of the game and as a result it just feels fine like i like i'm somebody that doesn't like i really don't like battle passes i'm not a real big fan of like over monetization of my video games uh i played diablo 4 Never a single time was I ever interested in looking at the battle pass. I had zero interest in it. Especially because, like, what's really annoying with a game like Diablo 4 specifically is the fact that, like, what are you doing putting... What are you doing putting monetization like that in a game that is loot-driven in the first place? Like, we're supposed to be trying to earn the best gear we can possibly get in the game and look cool. That is directly tied to how we play those games. Same thing goes for... Same thing goes for these MMOs. When I look at games like uh, Blue Protocol, which I know is going to be on the way relatively soon. Last, uh, um, Lost Ark. One of the reasons why these, like... Like, highly hyper-monetized MMOs don't really appeal to anybody anymore. And why I think that many MMOs across the board are just kind of becoming a little bit less popular as years go on is because uh, outside of Final Fantasy 14, I think Final Fantasy 14 is doing fine. Um, but what's happening is, is that they're taking the things that used to reward us for playing the game and now they're selling them to us. And they're making the things that we earn by playing the game because the grind is the reason we play these kind of games. They're taking those things that are in the grind and they're pulling it out and and selling it to us and it's like well what the fuck is the point of me playing this game looking at lost ark as an example lost ark by the way i love how that game plays i love how that game plays i love how it looks i love the character designs i love the class designs i love all that stuff of all of it loved it but 
for you to do all of your grinding for like getting equipment, leveling up equipment, all that stuff, it's all pay to win. It's all pay to win. So it's like you just lose interest because the reason you play those games is to get stronger, not pay to get stronger. You play to get stronger. That's the whole point. That's what makes it feel rewarding when we beat a boss and we get an epic piece of gear that we're looking for for our character. But when you're selling that shit, fuck. I mean, what's the point of playing? And that's, you know, I brought this up before when I was talking about like gotcha games and stuff like that. More times than not, what ends up happening with these games is that when you sit back and realize a lot of the money that you're spending on it, you're just spending that money so you play less. So you spend less time playing the game. So that you're not farming the currencies so that you can get your summons. Instead, you're just paying for the summons and just summoning the things that you want. And then you're buying another pack to get the equipment or whatever runes or whatever you want to be able to put on that character to make them strong. You're just paying for everything. So you're never actually even playing anything. <laughs> the problem with single player studios getting forced to make live service games. I mean, here's the thing. The forced part is the issue. It's not that these... It's not that these studios don't have any business making multiplayer games or live service games. If the studio itself are passionate about making a game like that, then they should make the kind of games that they want to make. But it can't be forced. It can't be because it's for investor interests. It can't be because the, you know, the, the, the studio head is like, well, this is working for everybody else and now we're going to do it too. It can't be that. And the problem is, is that in many cases lately, that's exactly what it's been. It's exactly what it's been. Redfall. Yeah, I think Redfall is a really good example of that. And the thing is, is that like, I've brought that up on many occasions in the past. I've had a bunch of Xbox people like push back on me on that one. Because I, I said before, the, the failure of Redfall is Xbox's mistake. And they're like, no, that's Arcane Austin. That's Arcane Austin. That's Arcane's fault. No, like, no, no, no. Xbox owns them. It's their fault. If your food's bad, do you blame? Do you want to talk to the manager, or do you want, or do you want to talk to the cook? Think about that. If your food's bad, do you want to talk to the manager or the cook? I'd want to talk to the manager. I don't want to talk to the... I want to talk to the guy in charge. Because they're the one that's going to be able to rectify the situation. They're the, ones that are, they're the ones that are supposed to be in control. They're the ones with the responsibility... Is that not a good analogy? Why are you defending it when they are getting nothing from defending Microsoft? Oh, why are they defending it? I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, the thing is, is that like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, <laughs> The blame needs to be placed where the blame should go so that things can get fixed and things can change. Simple as that. Simple as that. The chef? Why would you guys want to talk to the chef? Chef's not going to do shit for you. Manager does everything. Manager is in. Manager is responsible for the chef. The manager is the one that's supposed to be making sure that the chef is doing their job. In many cases, the manager's the one that taught the fucking chef how to do their job. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I want to see a little bit more of his tweet, actually, because there, there was some other stuff that he was talking about as well. Uh, we, we looked at that one. There was another part of this that I, I, that I liked. <laughs> the chef can hook you up, though. Yeah, but the chef fucked up your food the first time. Why would you want him to hook you up? The only thing he's going to hook you up with is Salmonella. 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 
So, uh, and then he, he he continues on going on a multitude of bad decisions lead to lead to days like today, and usually uh, and at uh, and usually employees don't deserve the price. Wishing the best uh, uh for, best for everyone impacted as as of today as twenty twenty four continues to be uh for these workers and stuff. You know what the funny thing is too is that now, like now he says now he says this. You know one of the things that I realize is that um. Part of these overblown budgets for these games include them over hiring people. So they're overstacking what they actually should have for devs. And those devs should be working at other studios that actually, you know, have the budget or have a real role for them to do. And I think what's ended up, I think what's happening is, is that as these studios are failing and they're not meeting their, you know, they're not meeting the profits that they're supposed to meet. Uh... And one of the reasons they're not meeting the profits that's necessary is because of the fact that they've hired far too many people to do the work that they needed. Um, which might be a symptom of them trying to put out the games faster than they should. I'm not really exactly sure how that works. So, I don't know. I don't know. But I think largely what it is is that they have over budgeted themselves and they have like like he was talking about here um you know the, just the overall cost of games is so high and this 200 to 300 million dollars by the way don't let them don't let them fucking kid you about this this 200 to 300 million dollars half of that is marketing expenses half of that is marketing expenses and i think that that is something so overlooked it's not even funny it's so overlooked. Half of this budget is going into marketing expenses. Excuse me, how, exactly uh, how much money, I wonder, did Baldur's Gate 3 spend on marketing? Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 3 widely spread by word of mouth. Power World, word of mouth. Helldivers 2, word of mouth. Enshrouded did really well, word of mouth. If the game is good... People will play it. People will talk about it. Communities will be generated around it. And it will just infect everything else. And I think one of the things that many of these companies don't realize is, is that there is a really, really effective form of marketing that is on the internet that helps them to promote their games as long as their games are good. Now, obviously, you can't just rely on viral success because that's not realistic to think that your game is going to go viral. Who knows? You would never be able to tell. Case in point, we're looking at Helldivers 2. Helldivers 2 exceeded their expectations, exceeded the expectations of Arrowhead Studios by miles and miles. So, you know, with that said... A good game sells. Um, uh, marketing budget is all fine and good, but it can never rival your production costs. That's just asinine. It's what's happening. It's what's ha we already know it is. We saw Sony's budgets during the Xbox uh, Activision Blizzard acquisition trials. We saw it. We saw it plain as day that they had a hundred and fifty million dollar marketing budget. What? Fuck. What the fuck? What? Where? Do you guys? I don't even want to know. With that said, I don't even want to know how much Blizzard spent on marketing Diablo Four. A game that, by all rights, shouldn't need that much marketing because it has such a recognizable, such an iconic name that you just don't need that kind of you don't just don't need that kind of money behind it. Going out and renting out, I, I, I've 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 yelled about this until uh, to the heavens. Going out and renting out a a French church so that you can paint the walls with diablo-related murals and then go out and have a song written and recorded by halsey and suga go out and get uh 
Megan Fox to read out hell uh, uh, people's names of the folks that uh, uh, died in hardcore mode or hardcore mode. Jesus, man, how much money? Uh, what I think there was like three different dinner events that they held with content creators and uh, and news outlets where they served Diablo style food and had a forge and all this stuff. Like so much wasted money, so much wasted money. You know where that money could have gone? Into the end game. Into the game. Into creativity. Better management. I saw an article the other day. Uh, you know. Like talking to, like a, an interview with Rod Ferguson. And I'm like, I like Rod. I think I think he did a great job with, um, you know, with the gear series. I don't exactly know what his role is or role was for uh, Bioshock Infinite, but you know, for him to claim the title of the fin of the the finisher or the closer or something like that, I'm sorry, Doug. I just don't see what you did to Diablo Four, and if and and if I am seeing what you did with Diablo Four, it ain't good. It ain't good. Nine thousand devs worked on Diablo Four. Where's the content? That's a really good question. It went into it went into drawing up horrible looking skins. I made it sure so I finished. <laughs> yeah, actually, good point, Rory. Good point, actually. Yeah, yeah. He came in and finished it already. Yeah, he closed the door on that one. He closed the door on that one. Good lord. Good lord. My question is like, what are we even expecting from... You know what the, you know what the funny thing is? Asmongold brought this up, and it's so true. Anybody that's ever played a Blizzard game knows this. Diablo 4 is going to fix a ton of stuff. And honestly, just before the expansion... Like everything's going to be probably in a pretty solid spot where it's not going to be like the best ARPG ever or anything like that. But relatively speaking, I think that before the expansion comes out, the game is going to be in a much better place than where it started. And then all of that is going to be reversed the day the expansion comes out because they will throw all of the good things they did out the window for all of the new ideas that they came up with for the expansion. And it's just going to ruin the game all over again. It's going to ruin it all over again. Uh, hey. Hey. This is one of the, this is one of the things, you know, <laughs> I was talking to my friends about this the other night. We were playing, um, uh, we were playing, uh, what were we playing the other night? Oh, we are playing Heroes of the Storm. We should play sometime, Rurikon. I suck at it, but we should play. <laughs> Carry me. <laughs> we were playing Heroes of the Storm the other night, and I think I was looking at, at, at White Mane, and I was like, Blizzard has forgotten this game. Like, if you've seen White Mane skins in Heroes of the Storm... Luckily, the internet has forgot that game because there's some spicy skins and heroes. There's some spicy skins and heroes. Hots is fun. It is. I think you want know, you know the reason why Hot Heroes of the Storm is fun is because Blizzard forgot it exists. They probably don't even know people are still working on it. They have no idea people are still on maintenance for that game. Space Channel 5 with another super chat. Saying, stock market go up, spend money on developers as invest, stock market go down, cut developers show uh, to show being efficient. You actually have a good point there, to be honest with you. You actually have a really good point. You have a really good point. I do think, like, I think that's just kind of like the natural way that many companies in the industry, fo like, work. When the construction industry is booming, they're hiring a ton of people. They're spending money left and right. They're wasting money. Like, w once you get into, like, the... Once you actually get into, like, corporate America and, like, you get into the higher levels and you realize and see just how much money gets wasted and how these companies 
when they're making money, they don't give a shit. You could come to them and be like, hey man, you guys could save a ton of money if we did this or this. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, that's too much work. They don't care. They don't care. But once they start losing money and there's not enough work, then it's all about cost cutting. Then it's like, oh, how can we save money? Who can we get rid of? All that kind of stuff. Heroes is unironically the best MOBA. It still is. It still is. It still is. My friends always love to go back and forth with the uh, with the joke of uh, was it IGN? S some reviewer gave it like a five out of five out of ten no comeback mechanics, and I'm like, <laughs> Hots has like some of the oh, some of the sickest comebacks ever, like sniping a boss. Or I do. I mean, there's, there's so many different ways that you could you could uh, you know, sniping camp, sniping bosses, uh, sniping an objective or something like that, uh, distracting people. I can't tell you how many times I've made people chase me, uh, dude. There's just there's so many different opportunities you have for to like come back in Heroes of the Storm. It's not even funny. I only know how to play three characters in that game, though. I play Tracer. I play I don't know that's all I got <laughs> I play Tracer oh uh Vala Vala Tracer and Malfurion those are the three I know how to play well outside of that I can't do it oh Diablo I'm actually a really good Diablo Diablo is like one of the ones that I actually understand pretty well, at least. Vala is safe. You say that. You say that. Until you look until you look over at the other side and uh, somebody picked. Uh, uh, oh, my God. What the hell is his name? Can't remember his, I can't remember his name. There's uh Dual Blades. Dual Blades guy. Uh Night Elf. Fallen Night Night Elf. Uh became a demon hunter. Uh Black Temple. Uh I can't remember. I, I know what raid he's for. I, I even said his Illidan. Thank you. God. I'm like <laughs> I know everything other than his name right now. Yeah, Illidan is like a direct counter to anything squishy. Especially like a Vala or something like that. The minute he hunts, you're out. You are done. You are done. GG. Uh, I remember the main complaint: most competitive players for heroes that what that uh, it can't uh, that they I can't carry the game, uh, which is pretty much yeah I can't yeah yeah I can't learn how to play with other people. That's what that means. Yeah. That's the one thing that I really always liked about playing heroes is that like, if you're actually playing with a group of players, like you guys are fucking, it's fun. You're actually communicating, doing stuff together. Um, you know, Blizzard went the route with that game of like trying to make a game that was less toxic, which is really difficult to do with a MOBA and actually having like team plays and stuff like that. Man, man, it's super sad to see. Nova was your favorite. I like how we're still talking about it in the past tense. We can still play the game. There's still people playing the game. I played it last night. <laughs> I don't think it's been a few years since they've added anybody. I think what was the last character they added Hogger. Sylvanas is really good. Sylvanas is a lot of fun too. Actually, they recently buffed Sylvanas actually. Yeah. Yeah. They recently did some changes to her. She's really good. She's more of just like a straight up assassin now though. Like before she was kind of like a laner. Well, she's not really like a laner anymore. You you wouldn't use her for that as much. I know I just haven't played it for years. Randoms with Cho'Gall is amazing. Good Lord. Good Lord. Could you imagine having like a, a toxic Cho'Gall teammate? <laughs> Oh, 
My buddy, my buddy calls Chogall. Chogall. Uh... Oh man. Uh... I forgot what the Murloc's name is. Uh, Chogall, the Murloc, and one of the other characters. He calls them fuck boys because they just kind of like they all they. That's just what they do. They're just like really annoying, hard to kill, hard to track down. Illidan, you forgot Illidan, really? Dude, it's not, I forgot his name. I even called out what radio, I said Black Temple. I'm like, for some odd reason, his name escaped me. I'm sorry, Murky, thank you, that's what it was. That is Murky. Yeah, I'm sorry I forgot his name was. Fucking judge me, man. Judge me. God. Sometimes your brain just deletes some information. I lost a name, I knew where he was though. You know who else forgot Illidan? Blizzard. God. God damn, that's so true. That's so true. Shame, 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 shame. Good lord. Shame on you guys, okay? Shame on you guys. I had some other things I want to talk about. Speaking of talking about these Twitter folks, these Twitter people. I want to talk about this, okay? Jez Corden brings up a really good point here. Notice how nobody is mad at Elden Ring DLC price because everyone trusts FromSoft to deliver on that price. Lots of pubs lost trust chasing short-term profits over the years and now wonder why people have lost faith. I really like this comment too. The fact that it's also been to, uh, that it's also been two years, so it doesn't feel like we're paying extra thirty nine dollars for something that could have been in the game at or could have been ready at launch, but was tacked on to nickel and dime. This is how PC expansion packs used to work. I still remember getting excited picking up Blood uh, uh, Brood War at my local EB, modern DLC, and just and seasons just don't build excitement, but this one from Elden Ring is. This is. So true. This is big true. This is big true. Big true. It's so true. Because the thing is, is that um, I still remember it too. I remember when DLC packs would come out and it was something that you were excited for because it, it had been a while. You know, sometimes maybe it'd been like six months. Uh, a year or more or something like that. And you're like, oh my God, you know, I'm still playing that game. Or maybe you just started playing it and like all of a sudden new DLC was already about to come out. You're like, oh dude, this is going to be sick. Nowadays with the way that they have these live service content schedules, it just doesn't feel good anymore. It's just, I think mostly it's because we expect it more than anything else. But, um, but the thing is for, you know, $39, we know what we're going to get from, from, from soft. Simple as that. We know what we're going to get from them. Why? Well, because I played Elden Ring, Dark Souls 1 through 3, Bloodborne, Demon Souls, uh, Armored Core 6. I've bought their games. I know what I get for their games. Just like if I were to go and I were to look at... If I were to go and look at... Um, I don't know. Let's just look at like Ubisoft games. If I were to go and look at their games, I know what I would get for their games. The same old shit I would get Assassin's Creed I would get uh, <laughs> a, a busted ass uh, a busted ass pirate game with no pirates <laughs> I just I, I'm I think one of the things that I'm gonna be like the final nail on the coffin for me you get radio towers from Ubisoft games it's not even that's so true um I think the final nail in the coffin for me and Ubisoft is whenever they release whatever this uh, whatever this next division game is going to be. I am so terrified that they're going to screw this up because like Division Two is in such a good place. They did such a great job with it. Uh, it it has probably one of the best 
action RPG style, um, like itemization systems, period. It's so good. You have so much freedom to customize your equipment and stuff like that. Pull off like legendary abilities and put them on other weapons and stuff. So good. Ubisoft, do not fuck up Division 2. For God's sakes. Just have one thing that's good. One thing that's good. Actually, you know, the funny thing is, is that uh, from what I heard, their Prince of Persia game was actually really good. But the problem is they just charged too much for it. And they charged like 60 bucks for a side scroller Metroidvania. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? How they have hand Beyond Good and Evil is why I hate Ubisoft. Beyond Good and Evil. Is that game ever even... Is the second one actually going to come out? So did Nintendo $60 Dread. Ugh. $50? What are, why are you guys giving me different numbers? Hello, Mr. Kitty. It's basically vaporware. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't get it, man. I don't get it. It's like it's like none of these studios have a like have a temperature. That none of them have a temperature on the on the industry. None of them are listening to the consumers. None of them are paying attention to like what we want, how much we're trying to pay. Uh, and the other thing is too, man, like, especially when I'm seeing like a lot of studios that are talking about games going to hundred dollars, like there are a lot of people out there that are like, oh, well, the gamers are going to buy it. I don't think they are like, I think they will. Don't get me wrong. Like there are going to be people that are going to get it because they're just going to suck it up because they want to play the games they want. But I think overall, like broadly speaking, you're going to see a fall in how many people uh, and how many games are purchased per year. Sure. Uh, you know. Final Fantasy will still sell or, you know, certain key titles and stuff like that are still going to still going to go off the shelf. But with that, with that said, I, I don't think so, man. I don't think so. I think they're just going to price themselves out of consumers. Rockstar 100% will try GTA 6 for $100. I would guarantee it. I would guarantee it. And you know what the funny thing is, is that for the most part, that'll probably sell. and It'll probably sell very well, right? And because we also have this weird... Um, we have this weird thing in our brain that when we see bigger price tags, we think higher quality. And since, since Rockstar doesn't like pump out a shitload of games all the time, people are probably going to perceive that hundred dollars as added value. They're gonna be like, oh man, this is going to be a hundred dollar GTA. This is going to be the most sickest GTA in the world ever, 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 ever. We saw, we saw, oh my God, we saw the trick quadruple A quintuple A. What do you think about that? Yeah. Quintuple A. <laughs> so you're going to have people. I'm just telling you guys, you're going to have people that are going to be like, oh yeah, they're, and they're going to, they're going to see that and they're going to perceive value with that price tag for some reason. The problem is, is that, okay, this is going to be a hot take. I'm not a GTA guy, but I can, re I can recognize and realize and look at, um, look at Grand Theft Auto 5 and say that it was a banger game that sold a shitload of copies, appeals to a whole lot of people, and was just an overall good game. It was just a good game. And obviously it's been supported and communities have popped up around it and it's remained popular still even today. Grand Theft Auto 6, likely with how much time it's been since Grand Theft Auto 5 came out, there's a really good chance that they're going to deliver on that again. Uh, they've seemingly just continued to get better at their craft when it comes to making Grand Theft Autos, okay? It will sell, and it will end up tricking the rest of the industry into thinking that $100 is fine. And then these other companies are gonna start trying to charge $100 for their games. And then overall, while there are gonna be some games that sell, you're not gonna see the, you're not gonna see the numbers that, that they used to see. You'll see an overall total of games like total game sales across the industry of like separate titles go down because players are not going to be able to afford buying more. 
And it might not even be that. It might not even be that we can't afford to buy them. It might actually end up being that because the price tag is so high, we're less likely to buy more than we normally would. COD could try $100. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see them be the first to try to jump in those waters. Love it. I don't think Xbox would let it happen. And again, I mean, that'd be their best way to try to sell Call of Duty on Game Pass. It's $100. Call of Duty, baby. New Call of Duty. Yep, that's right. It's a $100 game unless you come to Game Pass. Come get some Game Pass. Uh, the layoffs are horrible, but with leadership recognition, willingness to pay for Oh, actually, do you know what? I, I clicked on this too. And I need I need to look at this as well. There's something else. There's another one. There's another one. I missed another one. I have to blame it on somebody. Flew me. I blame it on you. You're the reason I missed it. All right, speaking of speaking of Larian Studios or at least listening to their games, I never actually watched this clip and I want to watch this. Uh, this Volumes are up. I might have to I'm I'm going to bring this other volume up so you guys can hear it, all right? Uh, this is existential to us as you can tell from all the emotion on David's face. This is uh Larian Studios going up and accepting their award for game of the year at Dice. Uh we're very lucky. We've had a lot of stage time. Uh, others are not so lucky. This is a really- Bro, their director of publishing is fucking juiced. Look at this guy. Good Lord, he's a fucking unit. Human industry, and we're really bad sometimes at showing that, showing developers what they're worth and showing the players at home that we care about them. It's kind of the elephant in the room, especially surrounded by all this opulence, which you know, it can only go so far. Without people, we would not... Bro, he just called it like it is. He just literally just called it like it is. He's like, especially with all this opulence, because he's like looking at, like, look at this big stage, all this money being spent, yet at the exact same time, studios, for some odd reason, can't afford to be able to keep these developers around for longer. Like, he's basically just calling it out for what it is. Because there, there, there is a level of hypocrisy with this, right? And, yeah. Yeah. All this opulence, which... You know, it can only go so far. Without people, we would not be standing here. Without the people that work in these games, we would not be standing here. Yep. Many, many people were let go uh, at the start of this year. I want you all to know that you are talented and that you matter and that you are the future of this industry. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the... Like, I get where he... Like, so... <clears throat> so, I made a video a while back where... And I've said it on multiple times because I've seen, like, developers that were complaining about how you know, how basically consumers need to understand how hard their jobs are, et cetera, et cetera. And I made the argument that I don't really give a shit how hard your job is. I just want good games. And when you're coming online and trying to make excuses for why your game is shit and why you think that uh, Baldur's Gate 3 or games like it are like an unreasonable standard for your companies to hit, well, obviously I'm not going to be listening. I'm just going to hear white noise. Now, that isn't to say that I don't want good working conditions for the people that are out there or, or want these people to have jobs. I want everybody to be employed. I want everybody to be, you know, fat and happy, baby. I, I want everybody to live in, a, live in a good life. But in the same breath, I still want good games, you know? And that doesn't mean that I value these people any less. And it really doesn't even have anything to do with the individual developers. To be honest with you, for the most part, I am empathetic towards the issues that they face, the companies that they're in, or the companies that they work for. Because if it wasn't for the fact that these companies were making such poor decisions in the first place, over budgeting their games, uh, selling games for too high a prices and pricing consumers out of their games, filling their games with monetization models that just don't work in the context of the game that they have, like Diablo 4 or something like that. All of these things are working against the company, the consumer, and the developers of the game. And as a result, while they think that they're going to be making all of this money, 
sure, maybe you make some in the short term, but in the long term, you start losing it. And that's what's been going on lately. That's the reason why they start to see their profits dip and they go, ah, 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 and they start throwing everybody out and throwing everybody off the ship to try to make sure that they can stay afloat. And that's exactly what's happening. This is not individual developers that are the issue. This is the leadership in these organizations, the leadership in some of these big AAA companies that are sinking their own ships. It's self-inflicted wounds. And it sucks to see so many people lose their jobs because of only a very few number of people's mistakes. And that's what's happening. We're talking about a handful of people making mistakes that are affecting the lives of everybody that works for their company. And then on top of that also affects the consumers that are out there as well. And it's bullshit. Don't let that flame be extinguished by our collective mistakes. I know that everyone here is scared because shit's really fucked up. All of your projections are wrong, and it's scary. Bro. There it is. There it is. All of your projections are wrong. And do you know what the crazy thing is with this? Is that Larian Studios is probably the best case study for that. Larian Studios, even these smaller companies, their projections are wrong. Helldivers 2 and Arrowhead, their projections were wrong. They thought that their game was only going to have... You know, I, I brought this up and I got a lot of pushback for this. And by the way, I think it's bullshit. I had a bunch of people that were like, oh, well, you know, uh, with the server issues with Helldivers 2, you know, it doesn't matter. They should have, you know, had more server space. They should have built the game to ha hold more players. And it's like, well, personally, I think that they did prepare well because they looked at the current or the, the peak concurrent player base for Helldivers 1 and saw it was like 6,700 people and they put a cap at 450,000. That's a wild, wild gap in how far they could go to be able to fit players in their game. However, their estimations were blown out of the fucking water with the game going viral and a ton of people wanting to play it. The exact same thing happened with Baldur's Gate 3. They thought that they were going to get 2 million concurrent players or, or, or 2, million, 2 million in sales or something. I forgot what it was. They, they had a really low number for what they thought that they were going to get. I remember Sven Vinka on the day that the game came out said that he saw that maybe the game would hit like 150,000 concurrent players. The game ended up hitting like 850,000 or something crazy like that. Even these small companies that are finding success are still having their projections outpaced. They're having the lucky side. The problem is, is that many of these companies on the AAA side are projecting even crazier heights. Games that are selling 20, 30 million copies for a game that only really has an audience of maybe 5 to 10 million players, if those players could even afford to buy these games in the first place. However, in the same breath, what ends up happening is you have games like Helldivers 2 or Power World or... Uh, um, Enshrouded or Last Epoch, some of these cheaper games that come out that are 35, 30, 40 bucks, players are going to go buy that shit instead because they can go and get two games for the price of one and have far more fun because, well, many of these other games that are out there that are so AAA high priced also suck ass. Suicide Squad. So, yeah, your projections are off. And you're making mistakes that are causing people their livelihoods. And also the customers are the ones that are suffering as well because we're not getting high quality products. So <laughs> he's absolutely right. Absolutely right. But we persevere as an industry. We will persevere as an industry. And you will all find your place and you will all be welcomed back with open arms. And we'll still be making games for the players and for you and uh, with these guys. So. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love that. I love that. Because the other thing is, is that I think like sometimes we can get really doom and gloom about this, but these folks will find other jobs. I, I realize there's going to be some edge cases where some really bad things can happen because, you know, losing your job is I, I just lost mine in December. It's stressful. I, I've, you know, I've damn near had an ulcer over it. I've had sleepless nights, sweating nights. Um, I am beyond more stressed than I ever have been in my entire life, but luckily I'm working for myself, so that stress feels a little bit, you know, the stress feels 
healthy in a way. Um, these folks will find jobs. They'll find other places to work. But at the same time, you know what studios we're not seeing layoff? The studios that are succeeding. And those studios that are succeeding are the studios that have made the games that seemingly are the most beloved. It's not just success. It's that, you know, also as gamers, we love these studios. I fucking love Larian. I love the vibe they give off. I love how they talk to their, I love how they talk with their community. Same thing goes for, that's the other thing too. That's something that's like wildly overlooked by many of these studios is, that, is how they approach their community and how they engage with them and include them in the development process. Larian crushing it. And Shrouded did a really good job talking with the community and making sure they're, they're getting stuff in. Last Epoch is a game built off of the community. Quite literally, it was built out of a community. It was built out of the Path of Exile community, Diablo 2 community. Helldivers 2, also making sure to stay engaged with their community and learn as much as they possibly can and try to tackle issues that they see that are happening with the game. It's sad to see the industry take the dive that it has, but at the exact same time, I'm going to go back to say what I said. This is a very few people making poor, poor sales proje or projections. Let me say that. This is a very few people that are making very poor sales projections that have no idea what they're doing with their job. I'll just say it. There are people that are working at these companies that are in the leadership of these companies that have no business being there. Either they are old heads that don't understand the industry as it is today, or they are CEOs that are coming from other factions of other industries that have no clue how the gaming market works, nor do they understand how tastes evolve within this industry. And they just don't see it coming. They have zero foresight whatsoever. None. Not a damn thing. So, of course, all of a sudden, it's going to surprise them when they see a game like Baldur's Gate 3 take off, where it gets... Over now, I, I think I saw their developers or um, uh, their publishing director came out and said they've sold over 10 million copies. A turn-based RPG sold 10 million copies in 2023. Wow! I can guarantee you that you could go to the door of any of the major AAA studios and say, hey, do you think a game like this would sell? And they'd all tell you no. They'd all tell you no. No, no way. No way that would sell. That just shows how fucking disconnected these companies are. Way out there. Way out there. Same thing goes when it comes to a game like Helldivers 2. I would almost guarantee that many of these companies, if... What am I saying? What am I saying? It did happen. The, uh, the team that worked on ODST brought the idea for a Helldivers-like game with ODST to... Microsoft to Xbox, and they said, nah, that's not going to work. That just goes to show the lack of vision in the industry. Lack of foresight. Lack of imagination. That's the reason why they're failing. And it's costing people their jobs, their livelihoods, their stability, their security. And it's really sad to see. But at the end of the day, with their failings, things can, I mean, uh, they'll get worse, but they will get better. They will get better. That was my rant. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> enjoyed. Good. Good. Let me uh, let me feed the cat real quick. Cat's hungry. Hold on. That's why he's that's why he's right here, looking at me, like just staring at me. It's time. Yes, the cat's like it's time. What are you doing? I've let you rant long enough. Come on.
my cat will try to smother us in our sleep. Oh my god. Missing breakfast. Luckily, I have my my need my needs in the um feeding the cat original soundtrack. That's basically what I did. I was like, you know, I want some background music on for these guys real quick. going on here um let's see here ask modern oh let's see uh suna soul silver with a five dollar canadian super chat says um ask modern western developer about how Final Fantasy XIV came back taking a big risk. I bet they will say that it's impossible. Now look where Final Fantasy XIV is now. You are 1 billion percent correct. You're 1 billion percent correct. Trillion, maybe. The thing is, is that when we look at, uh, when we look at a game like Final Fantasy XIV and the subsequent fall and then rise um i don't think that there's enough people in this industry with enough guts let alone creativity or vision to be able to pull off something like that i i just don't think so personally i just i just don't think like the amount of daring it takes for a um the amount of daring it takes for for somebody like naoki yoshida to step up and say we want to make an entirely new game and we're going to develop that entirely new game while still supporting the old game until it is ready and we're going to make it as quickly as we possibly can we're going to revamp the entire game from the ground up we're also going to make it a part of the lore that when we destroy the first 1.0 version of this game that 2.0 is now going to be the new world and that is somehow going to play into the full narrative of this game from here on out is absurd that level of genius is something that is so rare to find so rare to find uh, now kiyoshida is a treasure he really is i really hope that they give him the opportunity to make his first mmo from the ground up like just not where he's trying to save another mmo or even trying to still support Final Fantasy 14. I would love to see them remove him from Final Fantasy 14 where they're trying to get towards the end of its life cycle and then put him on the main the main team as the main creative director or whatever for uh for whatever their next MMO is going to be. Cuz I largely do believe that Square Enix is a little bit more they're a bit more daring when it comes to the idea of getting rid of you know, uh, of not jettisoning, but like of stepping away and making another MMO. I don't think that I, I, I don't think that Square Enix will necessarily be afraid to make another MMO and realize that they need to, uh, you know, step up graphical fidelity and things like that and do something different. I think World of Warcraft is far too, far too afraid. Plus, on top of that, I think that they know that if they do try to make a new MMO, they would fuck it up. Nobody would want to play it. Uh, I really like the turnaround of stories of Final Fantasy XIV, Cyberpunk, No Man's Sky. Yeah. 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 Actually, ironically, the, the guy from Noclip Documentaries is the one that very... Uh, um, pretty directly has influenced the way that I write and why, and why I do videos. actually the craziest redemption story in all of gaming i think it is man i think it is like like the story for for um the story for cyberpunk not as cool or interesting 
The story for No Man's Sky is cool. It is really interesting. That, that one's cool. It definitely is. And what they've done with the game is incredible. But Final Fantasy XIV is wild. Wild. In conjunction, like, pace this out. You release a really shit MMO. You bring somebody in. In one year's time, was it one or two years? I can't remember exactly how long it was. I think it was one year. In one year's time, you continue to work on and improve the game that you plan on. This is the craziest thing. You continue to work on and improve the game you plan on abandoning. That means this is all in like from a corporate sense. What they did with the 1.0 version and the improvements that they made on 1.0 specifically was just wasted money from a from a corporate perspective from an ethical business perspective it's taking care of the people that are patient enough to stick with you throughout this entire time that's crazy that's crazy that they would that they would as a business waste that much resource on something that they planned on just getting rid of and then at the exact same time you are developing another MMO to layer on top of that one in 2.0. And that you've also brought in story writers to make sense of why you guys have basically destroyed the world. And then made it the core piece of the story moving forward for a decade long story. Spanning. Heaven's Heaven's word. Uh, Stormblood. Shadowbringers and Walker or expansions, right? That's crazy. That's I mean, it's it's what it, like just the balls on Naoki Yoshida to even be able to get them to like do that in the first place. Like homie's got some pull. You know what it is, though? You want to know why they told him? Yes. It's because of his drip. I mean, the dude's got style. I don't know what else to say. So it's the way the man dresses. It's the way the man dresses. Uh, working on an improve, working on and improving a game, abandoning. How is that different than playing any WoW patch, replacing the previous patch? It's the same thing. <laughs> no shit. Um, I think it would have ruined the Final Fantasy franchise if they scrapped it. Mm, maybe. The only reason, the only reason for saving, what are you saying? The reasoning for say, uh, for save may not be motivated by good intentions, but the actions, but their, but the actions speak the loudest. Yeah. I'm so hungry, but I can't eat. I have to wait till dinner. I can probably have a sandwich later, maybe. After I run some, uh, after I run some hell divers, we'll probably do that here in a sec, here in a minute. Yoshida should be the one running the company, to be honest. I don't know how Kiryu is going to do, but we'll see. The, the, you know what sucks about changes in leadership is that you're really not going to be able to notice like the impact of that person for at least six years until you start seeing games that, you know, are developed under them before you're going to know whether or not that person was good or not for the company. Epic Beast with a $4 super chat. Thoughts on Elden Ring? How many playthroughs? I have played Elden Ring twice. It's just so daunting, man. It's just such a big game. It's so big. I played it uh, one time using a co-op mod and another time uh, solo. I will probably do another full playthrough very soon. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll save it to I'll save it for like stream content maybe, like the month before, uh, the month before release. So then that way I'm like you know, that way I'm like ready, mentally, physically ready. He has some pull, yes, but he's not omnipotent. No, I don't, he's, I'm not saying that he's 
I'm not like, do you really think I'm being literal when I say the guy's a God? Like, I know he's not a God. <laughs> Come on. I just think he's done a really good job with Final Fantasy 14. I think he did a decent job with Final Fantasy 16, but no, he's not like every single person is fallible. But I do think that we should celebrate the directors and producers of games that did do a good job because those are the people that have sometimes the most control over the direction of that game. You know what I mean? I, somebody said that to me before, and I always really like that. We should never pay attention to the studios that make the games that we want. We should pay attention to the producers. Because most times, the producers are the ones that end up leading to many of these games being as good as they actually are. You ever play 11 back in the day? I tried 11 on Xbox 360, I think. Uh, it didn't click with me, though. Uh, I was too young, and I didn't really like MMOs. Or I didn't like, I, like, MMOs didn't really interest me. I was, yeah, I was just too young, and... I thought MMOs were for fucking nerds. <laughs> I mean, I was right. I just didn't know that I was a nerd. Yet. Yet. Uh, that's part of that's part of a video I'm doing. I can't. I don't need to talk about that. Um, damn, actually, fucking sick. Let me see. There was something else that I wanted to talk about. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, this sucks. Nintendo is suing the creators of the Switch emulator Yuzu. Yuzu works so well, too. That sucks. That sucks. But that's also like... That's also like Nintendo being Nintendo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which I mean, this is probably going to lead to this is probably going to lead to them shutting down Yuzu if it's even available right now. I mean, you could probably find like some back doors of people that are going to continue to update it, you know, more like independent stuff rather than like, you know. This is why, like, if I was making an M, I mean, like, what do you even do, dog? What do you even do? Like, you got to backdoor this shit. You got to black market this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to try to monetize it. You gotta backdoor, backdoor that stuff. Don't let anybody know who you are. But at the same time, these modders, these people that are making this stuff, like, they want to make sure that, you know, they want to make sure that, uh... Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure that Ryujinx is probably gonna get it as well. If Yuzu's getting it, then Ryujinx will. You think, they're, you, you think they don't realize that Ryujinx doesn't exist? Or, or exists? I'm sure they do. If it's gonna be one, it's gonna be the other two. Ugh, God. But why is this even on this? I don't even know who this is. Otherworldly gaming. Can someone recommend which one needs to be my first target for the back for the backlog? Why would you play Starfield? Can you stop the signal? What signal? I don't understand what you're saying. AC6 is for sure my choice. Are you kidding me? 
AC six isn't even like a um, like Armor Core six isn't even a uh, like a backlog for me. Like it's a game that I just kind of go play like episodically, if that makes sense. Like I go, I drop in, I do a few missions, and I go, I, I go and do something else. Mostly just because I haven't been able to finish it lately because I have other stuff that I'm doing. Oh, it's a Firefly reference. Can't stop the signal. Piracy will always prevail. Good point. It's been a long time since I've seen Firefly. Oh, let me check my thing one more time. If there's anything in here, anything else in here I want. Talked about that. I wonder what you mean. Uh, I wonder what you mean by crash because we've already seen the bigger crash in AAA. Oh, this is like the the conversation that Destin was having. I didn't get into the other part of it. But he says, "I wonder what you're talking about. We're already starting to see a crash. Sony's biggest games selling 10 plus million and taking and taking a gen out to come out, and they still only have six percent return on investment. That's as close to crashing as possible. And and this is true. This is exactly what's going on right now too." Is that like even though even though Sony games like even though Final Fantasy um not Final Fantasy but even though Spider Man Two sold you know 10 million copies it's not enough because they spent too much developing the game they spent too much developing the game and that's not by the way these companies want to make you believe that it's just rising salaries it has nothing to do with the salaries it's a it's that they themselves have over invested in how many people they need and also how much marketing they need to market a game in the first place. Simple as that. Simple as that. I think I covered most of it. Oh, that's right. He commented on this too. I missed this. I'm sorry. Man, I forgot I liked a bunch of tweets in here and I kind of lost, lost the plot on this, this whole conversation. Uh, to finish the game, blah, 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 that already, 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 we already talked about that earlier. Um, the conventional logic of players not, uh, oh, here it is. This is what I wanted to talk about. I forgot all about this. The conventional logic that is players are not as price sensitive as people think, but this applies to 40 to $60 games. They say it doesn't make a difference. Leaping to $100 when quality can't be trusted would be suicide, uh, especially with the decline of market uh, uh, market uh, the decline of marketing avenues so true so true this actually goes back to what i was talking about before where i said they're spending far too much money on marketing budgets and it's not necessary it's the problem is is that like for some odd reason maybe it's just that they have too old of people working in their marketing departments that don't know how to utilize you know how to how to utilize digital marketing better but i think that's i honestly kind of think that's what's going on uh, but you know, this puts it into context. Like, yeah, we're not price sensitive when games are between forty to sixty dollars, but we are price sensitive if you take it up to a hundred. You know what I mean? The problem is with uh, the problem is more with modest inflation increase uh, uh, incre with the modest inflation increase to eighty dollars, for example, that you're still fighting for screen time. Absolutely true. Uh, he's talking when he's talking screen time. He's talking about the fact that like their games aren't on store shelves anymore. They're talking. He's talking about how the only way for you to be able to market your game is by the Steam marketplace, by the Xbox marketplace. Uh, when you load up your PlayStation, um, that's how people are finding games nowadays. More people have adopted digital download and have steered themselves away from owning physical media. So as a result, you're not seeing these games when you're walking into stores anymore. No, you're seeing these games when you turn your PlayStation on and then you go to look through the go to look through the library. You're seeing these games when their trailers come out through IGN or through their own place. You're seeing these trailers when you're watching, you know, maybe if you see like uh, have you guys ever seen a video game commercial pop up like I don't have Hulu anymore, but I used to have Hulu with ads. I never saw a single video game commercial come up on Hulu ads and it blew my mind because I was like how are you not like you have my personal information, right? Like, how are you guys not targeting me with ads that would make sense, which would be like video games? It's just so weird. Honestly, just in general, digital marketing is kind of ass. 
Because, like, they really do just go for, like, the blanket approach when it comes to trying to market products towards people. Because now that I think about it, like, most of the time when I'm getting, like, advertisements for stuff, it's always, like, balding solutions. And I'm like, bro, I got the opposite problem, dog. <laughs> I got the opposite problem. That's not what he's talking about. Screen time refers to how much time you have to spend on X. No, 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 no. He says right here, in a crowd... In a crowded in a crowded market where there's less and less screen time each year, so operationally so operational uh so the operationally viable raising the antithetical to the screen time problem. Uh I'm pretty sure he's talking about what I'm thinking. This is essentially what's so messy about the industry at the moment. You need to invest large sums of money to to compete, but it's for screen time and less for shelf space. No, Shiva, I'm right. That's exactly what he's talking about. It's more for screen time than it, and, and less for shelf space. There's a lot less screen time than ever than there was shelf space. So the risk is even higher and cra uh, even higher with crazier levels. Well, and it's also probably to do with just how many releases come out a year as well. Games are becoming more and more like, uh, one of the biggest threats to AAA, one of the biggest threats to AAA too, is that um, there's, we are getting, we're getting more access to games than we ever had before. Like in the same in the same breath where we can say video game prices are getting out of control, we as like uh like the the general population of gamers have had more access to indie titles, early access titles, things like that than we ever have before. Before it used to be you know just your so then why is he talking about it in a marketing sense when he's talking about shelf space? That doesn't even make any sense in the context of this. Huh. I don't know, maybe I'm misinterpreting. But if I am misinterpreting, I'm still not wrong about what I'm talking about. So that doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, no, that's very true. That's very true. You are you're not just competing with just games, you're competing with all kinds of forms of media all the all the exact same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like the thing is is that like even if you're just talking about like looking at looking at your phone, where before like when you went into an area um when you went into an area on the market like, you know, to search for something, you're going to get advertisements. Um you're going to get advertisements for things that you just don't really expect. You know what I mean? You're going to see like other things that you're not, you weren't necessarily expecting to go looking for. You're going to have advertisements for all kinds of things anymore. That's why, that's why you're seeing some of these studios and some of these developers starting to switch to putting their shit in video games instead. That shit sucks. That is bullshit. Because we see that with uh, Ubisoft. Ubisoft and uh, uh, Assassin's Creed games, right? Where they throw ads for their own games and expansions in their own games. Because that's the best time be for you to be able to maximize your screen time. The biggest threat to AAA is AI and ray tracing built into game engines, empowering uh, one indie dev to do the work of 10 people uh, so they can compete on equal grounds with AAA. You know, like the thing is, is that I think that's accessibility in general. I think accessibility is the biggest threat for the AAA industry in general, yeah. Uh, because now that consumers have more access to games than we ever had before, we're being exposed to studios that we never would have had access previously. But then also at the exact same time, the other thing is, is that, um, you know, looking at the case of Arrowhead and Helldivers 2, is that these guys have more access to tools than they ever have in the past. And they've been able to make a, what I would say, I mean, Helldivers 2, for all intents and purposes, looks like a AAA game, even though it's not. It looks like a triple-A game, even though it's not. It, di it doesn't have triple- it doesn't have the triple-A level of, uh, of investment, of marketing, or any of that stuff. I mean, uh, Sony definitely did their part in trying to increase that, but yeah. I already value word of mouth more than official hype and reviews. Yeah, I think so. I, I do too, for the most part. I, was, I, I listen to a lot of- like, before I buy something, unless it's a game that I have a lot of faith in, 
or a studio or a developer, not de not developer or a, uh, a producer or director that I have a lot of faith in that I know I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get screwed on this, right? Like, I like Final Fantasy 14. Naoki Yoshida led Final Fantasy 14. Many of the team from Final Fantasy 14 worked on Final Fantasy 16. I enjoyed Final Fantasy 16. Who would have guessed, right? Uh, there's certain games that I'll look at and I have a lot of faith in. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Massive amount of faith in it. Massive amount of faith. Uh, somebody actually, uh, for... Uh, I, I, I already have that game ready and waiting. I cannot fucking wait. I'm going to go so hard on that game. More or less, I just meant that studios are out there right now showing that you don't need a $200 million budget to make a good game. Capcom is goaded. We've talked about this many a times. Capcom is just goaded. They really are. They've done a great job over the years. You can have your opinions about some of their other shit. It's like, you know, copyright striking YouTubers and their stance against modding and stuff like that. But outside of that, I wouldn't... Uh, uh, I mean, I buying one of their games feels like one of the safest things I can do. Buying buying Resident Evil Seven or buying Resident Evil Village felt completely. I felt completely safe making that purchase. Uh, buying Resident Evil Four felt completely safe making that purchase. Uh, if I were interested in playing fighting games, uh, I would imagine buying Street Fighter Six would feel pretty safe. Uh, Dragon's Dogma Two looks pretty safe to me. I mean, we'll see. You guys can wait for me. You guys can wait for me to play it if you want. How about that? I heard the Tekken story mode is amazing. Is it really? I haven't played a fighting game in a long time. In a long time. I was tempted to at one point. I Because like there were a lot of people playing like Guilty Gear Strive. That I heard was really good. Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry is so good too. I love DMC. That was mostly because I was an edgy kid. So of course like when I was. When I was like. When I was a little boy, me and uh, me and my buddy Daniel would pretend that we were Dante and Virgil, and, like fight with sticks in my backyard. NVIDIA's GeForce Now free tier will now make you watch ads before gaming. I'm telling you, it's coming, Game Pass users. It's coming, Game Pass users. You're going to get ads soon. $100 games and ads in your video games. How about that? $100 games and ads. That's what you guys are going to get. Holy shit. Mithril, the five gifted memberships. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Make sure for all you new members, thank Mithril for your membership. And now you get emotes. Now you get emotes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. ads in every loading screen no you get ads before the loading screen <laughs> that's what you get you get ads before the loading screen and then another one after <laughs> then like every time you open your menus uh, 
trying to see if there's anything else that I wanted to pick out on here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Um. Oh, there was. I saw that Pokemon trailer today too. I'm always afraid to look at like any Nintendo property on my on my stream because they're like super weird sometimes with like trailers and stuff. But um, I don't really understand it. Like I watched the trailer and I'm like, I don't really understand what this is trying to say. And I'm like, this is in Pal World. This. This isn't Pal World. They have like another, uh, that new trading card game, tra trading card mobile game is going to make so much money. Trading card mobile game? Oh, are they actually going to make like a Pokemon card trading card game for mobile? That's crazy. The one for, the one on, uh, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh one made a ton of money too, if I'm not mistaken, right? Playing, uh, playing Rebirth this week? Of course I'm playing. Of course I'm playing. I need to figure out, am I going to be able to pre-download it? I'm hoping that I can. It's on Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to be no lifing that shit. Like, normally Thursday is a stream day. Right? Normally Thursday is a stream day, but I'm not going to be streaming that day. You get a Todd Howard text, <laughs> it just works. That's right. That's right. Realize that like, so, there's gonna be some like gaming exec that's gonna see a clip from this stream or something like that and be like, you know what? Actually, that's a really good idea. Play one before and then one after. Anytime they need to change their skills or anything like that or open up their inventory, pop another one in there. Maybe we'll get one of those. Instead, they don't, we don't have to interrupt the gameplay, guys. We're not gonna interrupt the gameplay, but we're just gonna have like a sidebar that pops up, you know, advertising deodorant or something. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of people post too that like there's been a like the, there's been a few like developers that are like I have no idea what to do now. And uh you know before like I said like I I totally feel for these folks. I felt the exact same way cuz like it's so foreign losing like losing your job. Um especially because like anytime that I've ever switched from careers, it's always been like my um like of my volition. Like, I left a job because I found another job that I wanted to work at. Uh, never like a, hey, you don't have a job anymore. And then you're just like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, most of, the, most of the news now is just surrounding like the layoffs and stuff like that more than anything else. Bullwing. I like how I like how certain websites I like how certain websites try to minimize it, right? Like some people are like Sony lays off 900 employees, and then other websites are like Sony lays off 8% of workers. We know who's paid. We know who's paid, okay? Uh I've got re I got rebirth preloading right now uh it'll likely get done by thursday morning given how much my internet sucks ah dude that does suck not me though not me though you know what i got fiber fiber so i'm like i'm cruising i'm cruising when it comes to internet downloads and stuff like that something i definitely appreciate Da, 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 da. All right, let's load up some fucking hell divers. I don't really have a whole lot of other things I wanted to talk about today. Not off the top of my head at the very least. I do need to figure out what I'm going to be eating for dinner tonight, though. I need to cook this week. Anybody have any good suggestions for something to cook this week? Don't say anything complicated. If you say something complicated, I'm going to be really, really upset.
freedom, cooking freedom. I can't cook freedom. Chili. Ooh, chili does sound really good. It's been kind of warm lately, though. I don't know if I want to do chili or not. Steak. Steak always is good, though. You got a good point. Air fryer chicken. <laughs> That's already what we're doing. <laughs> though I could do like a like an actual like almost like you know, like rotisserie style that shit, right? Like get an actual chicken, just like shut that whole fucking chicken in there. Or half a chicken really would probably be better to do, right? Half a chicken would probably be better. Super Earth. Our home. Prosperity. Liberty. Hi there. Oh. Uh, Democracy. Democracy. All right. Let me, uh. Let me change my stream stuff real quick. I, you know what? I, I just want to give a special shout out. I want to give a real special shout out to the people over on Twitch. Cause you guys are you guys are fucking soldiers, okay? I know it sucks that all the actions over on YouTube, but I really appreciate the folks that are still staying around and hanging out on Twitch. I highly appreciate it, big time. It'll grow. It takes time. It takes time for these kind of things. It'll happen. I change that to Helldivers 2. This is all good already. Where that Patreon love at? Well, of course I love the fucking Patreons. Are you kidding me? Bro. I thank them every video. I thank them every video. Um... Actually, to be honest, like, the, the Patreon thing is just, like, uh... I was actually really surprised that... Oh, shit. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh. At. Oh, wait. My camera's not even on here. This is what you guys get. No face cam. Too big. What do you guys think? Is this a good proportion for the, for the face cam? Is this what you guys like? To like reorder this, my bad. Oh, now my head's too big. Now my head's too big. I put that like right there, maybe. I guess that should be good. Uh, should bring back the green screen. Bring back the green screen? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I have a green screen. Green screen in a botting suit, just be a floating head. That actually sounds like a really good idea. You'd be like Wubby. A la Wub. A la Wub. Um, what do you think that we're going to get for our first free content drop? Um, actually, by the way, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something real quick. Hold on. If, if there are any available, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me do this real quick. Do this. All right, in the Discord, if you have not joined the Discord, I am calling all available Helldivers. 
I'm calling all available Helldivers from the Discord. I put my friend code in the Helldivers 2 section of the Discord. If you wish to join, you may. Uh, they still haven't fixed Daily Mission yet. It's probably going to take a little while first. Um, have you seen the new Somerton Apology vid? The guy has learned nothing. Somerton. Who's that? Second Thursday of every month, I think, is actually what they said they were going to end up doing. And uh, second Thursday of every month is going to be, I believe, a new war bond, right? And then we've already, I've already seen that they data mined some uh, assets from Helldivers 1, or that show some enemies that are going to be showing up from Helldivers 1. We already know that there are, um, we already know that there are, what else is in the works? We already know that mechs are coming, vehicles are coming. Basically anything that you can see, anything that you've seen, and um, I'm just going to play the game. Um, anything that you can see. Oh, there we go. We got Norski. All right. Uh, no, 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 not medium. Anything that we know came from before. Or anything we know that came from before. What am I saying? Did it take me? Did it take him with me? I hope. They, I think it did. Let me pick my stuff out right here. I don't understand. I can't take radar for some odd reason. Uh, should I bring the audio up a little bit? It's probably too quiet, yeah? Tell me how the audio is, if it's too loud. Uh, so we know that they're going to be bringing in things from Helldivers 1. Basically anything that you saw in Helldivers 1 is going to be in Helldivers 2 at one point in time. I think the one thing that I am looking forward to the absolute most when it comes to this game more than anything is faction bosses. I want to fight that big ass worm. I want to fight that worm. Uh, time to bring my shit in too. Let's do that. Oh my god. My DDR skills are not good right now. I can do this. There we go. I don't even need this. I don't even know why I picked this. The backpack's really, really good for, um, uh, really, really good for bots for sure I just like the way that I look to be honest oh, why I just reloaded so I'm definitely looking forward to faction bosses I think that that's going to be really cool I'm really interested on how exactly that they're going to implement it into the game if they make it like a straight up like boss raid system with like special currencies or special something that we get from it. I think that would be sick. Um, I've also seen the... Uh, back the fuck up. Um, I've also seen the developers uh, hint that we're also going to be probably seeing some weapon customization in the future. Like weapon... Uh, different modifications. Um, ammo types. Things like that. I think that that's going to be sick. I think that's going to be sick. Mechs are going to be awesome. Are you kidding me? That and I'm pretty sure like my... Like I haven't played... I need to play Helldivers 1. My friends told me that Helldivers 1... Because they're, they're big Helldivers fans. Uh, My friends told me that Helldivers 1... Is there a fucking spewer? Or is that just how this is?
Oh, wrong button. Oh. Jesus. I got him. I'm dizzy. Um, but I'm really interested to see how they implement a lot of that stuff. I think it'd be really cool to have, to have like weapon customization, loadout customization. I th the other thing too, that I keep forgetting that they have to fix, uh, they need to fix, uh, what the fuck is it? Uh, defenses and resistances, right? Like that stuff's still not working yet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that stuff still isn't working yet. So once that's up and running, I think that uh, I think we're going to be sitting in a good place. I think we're going to be sitting in a really good place. Jesus, what happened? What do we got going on over here? Oh, we're closing holes. Oh! Oh! I couldn't see it. Couldn't see it, guys. God damn it. I hate this planet so much. At least this will tell me where they're coming from. At least I didn't hit him. God, will you just die? All right, that one, that one worked. Man, we got some weather going on here, guys. I don't know what the, f like. <laughs> All I see is, or there has to be a spewer. There it is. I knew there had to be. I'm like, dude, I'm like, this is just way too thick for there not to be a spewer. Oh, fuck. Oh, no, I'm dead. I need backup! Oh, my God. I haven't reloaded anything. You see this thing just sidestep my shots? Is there another spewer? There's no way, right?
Is that a fucking mortar? Who brings a mortar? There is another spewer somewhere. Where? There it is. Somebody got it. Is there a third one? There's got to be a third one, right? Like, this is so thick. <laughs> I got distracted. I got distracted. Average day in Los Angeles? Yeah, it kind of feels like that, yeah? <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm in the sh- Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I can't see it from up here. Joining the fray. There's still got to be another spew. There it is, too. Yeah. Reloading. There we go. Now we actually have visibility. Uh, can I? No, not yet. Where's my shit at? Far. This way. We got this. We got this. I love how every moment in this game is so damn action-packed. There's always something going on. Oh. Did they already call it in? Destroyer party. It, it's imminent. I didn't get my fucking shit though. That sucks. Oh, you know what I should have brought and I didn't? Oh well. At least I got an arm on me. Jesus Christ, there's two of them. I really wish I had my... I'm here, brother. I'm here, brother. Oh, he... What? What's happening? Boss left orbit. Why am I being abandoned? I don't even know where they even called it in at. Why is it all the way over there? What happened? Did they get disconnected? Alt F forward because mission failed. Why would you do that? I don't, what is the point? Like, hold strong, man.
I guess we came in and they'd already like they must have already lost uh they would already must have lost a bunch of people or something like that. Seal bug holes, yeah. So they just didn't get everything sealed. Ran out of time. The two spots that must have been open must have been from uh People that may have left beforehand or something like that. I don't know, man. People are so try hard when it comes to this game sometimes. It's so weird. He didn't believe. No. Oh, it is a network connection. It's exactly what it was. There you go. I was just stuck there for some reason. It was, it was, it showed that it was like, it was supposed to be coming into land, but it didn't, it didn't actually come in. All right, we'll take a campaign on, uh, let's see here. Operation, Operation Defend Freedom. Like that's all. That's what they're all called. Operation Defend Freedom. Uh, what's this bug holes? I just don't like. The enemy is attempting to seize one of our planets. We must join the defense. I need to go fight some bots, man. I need, I need to get out of here and start pushing them bots back. Where's the help? Where's the help needed? Vandalian. Mm. Destroy automatons. Initiating FTL jump to the Vandalon system. Forgot about extracting and finishing a mission. Barely any rewards for extracting anyway. Uh, reflects the true value of every hell diver, bro. I. That's what I do, dog. I, I, I'm here to extract. I, come on. Forget about extracting and finishing a mission. No, no, no. We extract and we finish our job. All right. We finish our job. We go in. We do our job and we leave. We do our part. That's the point. Fortnite connoisseur joined. Danger enemy presence. So we need to get some codes to bring them over here to go here. I guess we can probably like... Somebody left. Okay. Somebody's having connection issues. What is happening? But it still shows them in the party. Allied destroyer has joined squadron. Hellpod launch suspended. What the? What? What? How is that even possible? How is there two of us in one pod? I'm gonna go over here. <laughs> like the one pod is bugged. How is there two of us in it? Okay. Okay, so Norski's here. Bearded Giant is not in his pod. Hi. What are you doing, Kitty Cat? I should just just I should just be dropping in on people to be honest with you. 
Okay, yep. Yeah. Why doesn't... I don't know why Norsky's not showing up. I don't want to take orbital laser. Yeah, I think orbital laser would be pretty good. Orbit synchronized. Big fan of orbital laser. Did he eat? Yeah, his food's over there. I don't know why he's not eating it. We're just waiting on this other guy. He wants to play Hell Divers. I know he does. He's not allowed to. It's not for cats. This is rated not for cats. Shit, we landed in the shit here, huh? Uh. I wonder if it would have been better for me to bring something. Ah, I don't know. This should be fun. Holy shit. Oh, we need to get the fuck out of here. Somebody just called on an eagle. Actually, we need to go that direction. Ow, ow, ow. Alright, that, that hurt, that hurt, that hurt. Um... Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Modders whining because there's an update that breaks the that breaks their mods. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I'm so sick of seeing shit like that. I'm surprised there's more like Like I know that like people are pretty upset with this game. Uh because like the modding stuff, because or not modding, but with cheaters and stuff like that right now. Right on top of them. Perfect. <laughs> oh, you love to see that. Uh, I know people are pretty upset with this game, and kind of they rightfully, rightfully can be because, like, I know people are complaining about the kernel level anti cheat, and I, I think, personally, it's not something that I'm super passionate about. But when the game already ha seemingly has a problem with cheaters, because uh, I, I guess there's a lot of like Chinese accounts and stuff like that that have been coming in. Uh, people are, are, are joining on matches where people have like maxed out rewards and stuff like that. Like not even maxed out, like thousands of samples and stuff like that. Um, like what's the point of having kernel level anti-cheat if you you have that kind of shit going on in the game? You know what I mean? Uh, is there a console? Yeah, there is right here. He's on it. All right.
I wish I would... Every time we get to a, something like this, we get to an objective, I realize, like, I should have brought something that had... Um... I should have brought something that actually can, like, I can use to defend. Uh, online competitive games has cheaters. Uh, that's new. To, well, no, it's not like online competitive game. It, the problem is, is that, like, they, uh, you know, you, they have a really invasive anti-cheat for this game, which, you know, should mean that we should have really good protection. But the problem is, is, like, people are coming into a lot of problems with cheaters and stuff in here, I guess. I don't know, I'm gonna look into it more, check the validity of it, see like how much it, you know, how much it's actually affecting things. Where's the jammer? Is that the jammer right there? Go hack it? Gotta go hack it. Oh, I thought I could just blow it up. We're on it, guys. We're on it. I need to find some ammo. There'll probably be some over here, maybe. Jesus Christ! Already got it. Good deal. Yeah, we're good. Man, there's another base all the way over there. Okay, so he's hacking the console now. Very cool. What's up, Bear? Are you the number one hell diver? I am. How did you know? I'm uh, number one competitive hell diver. At level 23, 24, whatever level I am. Need something bigger than railgun explosive? Oh, okay. I, like, um, I mean, railgun should be fine for bots, right? Uh oh. Wasn't paying attention. Uh, okay. Uh, oops. What are these guys trying to do now? Oh, they want to go take out the smaller spot over here. Honestly, sometimes I just like, like, the funny thing is, like, most of the times when I play this, I'm playing with buddies of mine that are just like, all right, let's go over here, let's go over here. And that works for me, man. I like, I like just being led around by the nose. I just need to shoot shit. Uh, it's better than Quake 3 Arena Railgun? No, I like the Railgun in this. I didn't even see it. I didn't even see it. I looked over at chat. I need to go get my ship.
I don't even know. I don't even know what killed me. I didn't see. I didn't see a mine. I didn't even see the mine. Was there one there? And I just looked over again and just walked into another fucking Jesus Christ. Why? Oh, it's the fucking... They're scrambling us again. Alright, I'm gonna go get my shit. This time I'm gonna keep my eyes on the ground. Are, they're not buried, are they? Is that what's going on? Oh, I see. I see that one right there. There it is. Alright. Time to join the fray. I'm gonna keep my eyes on the ground. Yeah, it looks at you. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> I wish that there was... I, I. What I would like to get is I wish that there was an overlay for, like, the computer screen so I could just kind of, like, look over at, like, the top corner and, like, read things that are being said in chat rather than having it on a separate, on a separate monitor. Because it ends up being, like, really distracting when you're, when you're playing something. That's probably one of the things that I still have to get better at as a... Uh, as somebody that live streams. It's like getting better at like playing games and also paying attention to people and talking at the exact it's not it's not the same it's not the same man Oh my god, they're right on top of me. Oh god. No, no! I'm so unlucky. That was just unlucky. That was just unlucky. <laughs> that was just bullshit. <laughs> At least I know where my shit is. What is he looking at? You see something down there, bud? Shit, I missed.
Uh, this is mostly a group of randoms. Uh, one of the guys, Norski, he's from the Discord. Oh, God. We need to group up, though. Help this guy out. Somebody doesn't know how to juggle yet. Gotta learn how to juggle, baby. Gotta learn how to bounce that motherfucker around. And get that thing loaded up real quick. Uh, none of the hate is being aimed at toxic players being mean to other players. Yeah, I've seen some of that shit lately. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna make a video about it. I'm gonna talk about it tomorrow. I've seen a lot of people discussing it, so I figured I'd put my two cents in on it. Couple other things too that I want to talk about as well. So I have a I have a video I'm gonna I'm gonna record tomorrow for Hell Divers too. I don't think I can get I can't get it in there. That's a fucking rocket guy. Uh, somebody else can get it. I have impact grenades, I didn't think about that, which makes it really difficult to blow those things up by just like tossing them in there. I could use some ammo. Oh, uh, we're getting jammed. Oh. Holy shit, that's scared, scared the fuck out of me. Nice. Is that a resupply? Yep. That's a hell bomb. Somebody else calling resupply? You did. Shit, why would you call right in front of that? I need that fucking ammo. I didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> there we go. Now I got it. We're good. Oh shit. Uh, let's see here. Let's do this. That's a sub that's my rail gun. Hell of a throw. I love having this. So I, I have this uh, throwing armor. Really good. Really good. Like, I mean, you can fucking, you can swing a grenade. Holy. Like the amount of distance I can get on a, I can get on a, a stratagem or a grenade is crazy. Where's the boys at? Oh, they're over there. Yeah, they're, they're right with me. I just can't see them. Shit. Ah, fuck. Oh, good lord. That was close. Yeah, the AT ATs. It, this place totally reminds me of Hoth. For sure. 
I think I said that the first time I logged in, like, with some buddies and hopped into one of these ice planets. Democrified that guy. Jesus Christ, what even hit me? Is that like a rocket? Oh, it is a rocket guy. Jesus! Do we get the big ones, ATST? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just interested to see how many different type of enemy, enemy types and stuff like that they end up adding to the game. I don't know, man. I'm just really interested to see what they do with this game overall, because I think there's so many cool things that they can do. I think my, oh, my equipment's right here. I didn't really need to call this in. Oh, well. Oh, fuck. No, he fucking flared right in front of us. He flared right in front of us. I cannot believe that. I cannot believe the disrespect. There's a tank. Uh, that should solve that problem. I actually should solve a lot of problems, to be honest. We need to move on. We need to go hook up with homeboy. He's way off on his own, way off on his own. Uh, what would you like to focus? What would you like them to focus on first? I first, I think the third enemy faction would be sweet. You know what the thing is, is that so I've been looking at like common community complaints, trying to see where you know where their focus is probably going to be divided. I think most likely what we're going to see is third enemy faction before we see anything else. But. If they're going to bring in the third enemy faction, they're also going to... I actually if I think one of the first few things that we're going to see is either the enemy faction or that their first bit of content is going to be just like a, like a lot of balancing and adding in a like a lot of uh, a lot of other solutions to common problems. Um, Like, armor piercing isn't working the way that it's supposed to be intended. Like, they have a lot of balancing stuff to work on. Like, even though I would love for them to have more content at the end of the day. The game needs, the game needs a lot of balancing. But, to the benefit of this game, like, the balancing, the, the poor balance doesn't really hurt it. Because the, you know, it's, this is not a meta, meta game. It's not a competitive online shooter. It's a cooperative PvE VP -E game. No P's. No, no P's versus E's in this game, guys. No P on P action. What a fucking nade. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> We're in the trenches over here. Got your back, brother. Got your back. Fucking 
stellar eagle strike. I always love bringing that one too. I like the carpet bomb one. That one thinks that one's sick. A grenade launcher. GL is really good too. I need to, I need to pick up the GL at one point. Oh fuck! It could turn out that way in the future. Imagine you would select a side. What do you mean select a side? The armor rating thing and the balancing of guns definitely needs to happen. Like, we know that's coming soon anyway. They've already kind of been talking about it. So I love my leg. select factions etc yeah i mean i don't think we're gonna see a pvp thing i mean you could see a, a global narrative like maybe there was like a global narrative where i don't know uh you know come to find out like this entire war is fabricated and we join the bots bugs and but i mean that's heretical so i don't even want to say anything like that I don't want the ministry. I don't want the ministry of truth coming after me for that one. You know what I mean? I wish this had crosshairs. I'm making it work though. I'm making it work. Yeah, from what I've heard from the mech, like with, on the mech front, like they've already, they already have like the assets and stuff in the game for the mechs. It's just getting it, um, like getting them working properly and then probably also balancing, right? Like I think balancing is going to be a really big, a really big deal. But at the same time, like stratagems need to make us feel busted because that's what makes stratagems feel so good in the first place. Fucking tank right next to me. Jesus. These fucking bots, boys. Can't give them an inch. Jesus. What a war. Calling in reinforcements. Dropping you right on your stuff, bud. Dropping you right on your stuff. I will say like one of the things that I really like about the game is it's difficulty scaling because man, it climbs so high so fast and you really do have to start like playing the game smarter and smarter and smarter. Like I understand, like I get why a lot of people at higher levels of difficulty probably want people to like come more prepared. Uh, Like, I can understand why people want folks to come more prepared or be more focused and stuff like that, uh, because it, it is difficult. It's very hard when you get to when you get to the higher higher level difficulties like, yeah, you, you got to fucking focus up. 
Otherwise, you are not getting off that planet alive. And chances are you're also not getting, like, all of your objectives and stuff done as well. Like, one of the things that I see, like, a lot of people do, like, probably the most common mistake I see happen is, um, like, people bringing mortars to, like, bug fights. Like, don't bring mortars to bugs. Mortars are strong. They're very strong. But they're just going to murder your team. They're just going to absolutely shred your team, and then you guys are going to be out of out of respawns and then gg gg but at the same time like i want people to have the freedom to pick whatever they want you know what i mean so it's like i'm not really gonna get like mad when people do it i've had it happen to me a couple times already uh i've got, i've been kicked out of matches so like the funny thing is is that we actually had it ha here ha we had it happen here on stream we had people that were uh that were being uh you know elitist that were like, oh, well, you know, you brought the laser drone. Stop using the laser drone. And I didn't I didn't realize that that kind of toxicity had already slipped into the community. So uh, those guys kept killing me mid-match right on stream. And I wasn't reading their chat because I'm not going to. I'm, I'm reading my own. You know what I mean? I like the idea that when you die, you respawn is actually a new diver. Yeah. Yeah. Freedom never looks so beautiful. Freedom never looks so beautiful. God damn, you love to see it. Come on, Norski. Your ass out of there! Yeah, this makes me wish I brought it uh, like a defense weapon with me, but that's okay. Greatest defense is a good offense. Oh, well, there goes my support weapon. More bots. And there's my tack pack. Oh no, no, I guess not. That's my fucking 50k. No, that's my that's my generator. Okay, well, I, at least I know the next thing I throw will be my. This is the next thing I know will be my 50k. I guess. Damn, I miss. I guess we must have really fucked up the bots on this one. They didn't want nothing. They didn't want the smoke. They were like, let them get off this planet. We're done. Look at how much, look at all the li the liberty over there. All the freedom. Oh my God, he almost stepped right in front of that. Oh my God. <laughs> Poor bastard.
We leave no man alone. Fuck. Get in that motherfucker! My funniest kick is when I joined and landed next to a tank and then the last re as the last reinforcement died almost immediately and then ki and then kicked once I was back in the ship. Good lord. It makes sense now though because I didn't realize before that I was getting kicked before matches would start and it's because they would see that I would I was picking like the the laser backpack which in hindsight, I, I don't use it really much anymore because I've been killed by it enough to hate it. So I get it. I get it. I 100% get it. But at the same time, I wouldn't kick people for it. If somebody's not using the loadout that I want them to use, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to message them shitty stuff. I'm not going to be that guy. I don't see the point in being that guy. I don't know why people want to be that guy. Completely unnecessary, in my opinion. Completely unnecessary. Is Nors Norsky must be a, like a hacker. Must be. Must be a hacker. Oh, we still got we got some medals to earn. How am I on premium currency? Pretty good. Pretty good. I'll be ready for the next for the next one for sure. I'll be ready for the next one for sure. What is this one? Airbase sabotaged. I wonder what I should take. I might take something for defense. Not mortar. I'll take, uh, what are we gonna do? We got this, this, this. Probably over here, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. What do you guys like to take? Yeah, that's what we'll do. What about here? Just waiting for the fourth guy to load in. There he goes. Yeah, we'll do this. I think this will work. Take the HP, homie. Or not. Does this dude just not believe in buffs? <laughs> Silly. Hello, uh, developer said no PvP. Yeah, I know. I, how did I miss your message? Ultima, my bad. Maybe you didn't unlock it in the in the past. Yeah, I think a lot of people were skip. I initially I skipped over it because I didn't know what it was. I looked right past it. I was like, I don't even know what the fuck that is. Mortar is so tempting. Uh, but I'm holding back. Yeah, mortar is good. Mortar is good, but it's uh, also very fucking toxic to play with. We're being jammed, too. Where's the jamming station? Oh.
Personally, I think we should go for the fucking jamming station first. I'm going for it regardless. Yeah. Otherwise, we ain't got stratagems and that's going to be a problem. Calling in an orbital. Oh my god. I thought I could walk between them. Oh, it's a rocket guy. Oh, no, it's not. It's one of those guys. I should have switched grenades. I didn't think about that. Still jammed. Attaboy, attaboy, attaboy. Now I can bring my shit in. Hopefully it's not scrambled. Doesn't look like it. I didn't know we already, I didn't know we are. I didn't even hear the hell bomb. I didn't even hear it. didn't even hear it I heard him call it in but I didn't hear him arm it I think it's because I, st I still heard like the radio tower doing its thing are we gonna take this are we taking this base out what are we doing I'm with you guys if you want to do it let's do it That was a rocket dick. I fucking hate those dudes. That works. That works. I still don't think you hit the thing though. <laughs> that was weird. See it like glitch out like that? Super runaway? Yeah, that's what it felt like right there. I was like, holy shit. I forget that the ship usually does drop where they like shoot the flare. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind. This is so my jam. I'm not a PvP kind of person at all. I hope they properly consider swapping Game Guard out for something else. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, they're, they're probably not going to do... Like, the thing is, is that they already have cheaters. So I doubt that they're going to switch the cheating software. 
Because you're already using a kernel level anti-cheat. Like, you're not going to get anything stricter than that, right? Like, do we really think that... Uh, do we think that, like, Battle Eye is going to be any better? I mean, it, I don't know. I guess Battle Eye probably might have been better, but it's still kernel level too, I think. Hell yeah, brother. Shit. How do you take these things out? Is this just staring right at me? It's just staring right at me. Calling in reinforcement. They don't have like a panel or anything. Like the minute that I walk, it's just going to annihilate me. No! Don't do it! Okay, they're working on it, I think. Yeah, drop right on that motherfucker. Do it. Or not. You know what? Oh, that works. Okay. I, I should have just used the orbital rail cannon, to be honest. I should just use the orbital rail, but that's fine. Uh, it's a game guard has a history of overreach. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it kind of is what it is, man. It's already there, and there's no way that they're gonna change. I, what games do you guys know have changed anti cheats like mid, like after they've already launched? Other than using like an in-house built one. It's like the one of the only ones that I can think of is like, um, I'm going to wait from that. Cause like one of the only ones that I can think of off the top of my head is like, um, Call of Duty built rick ricochet, right? And most of the time, most of the time, the people that have changed it, the only reason that they have changed it was because the one that they had was so piss poor, it wasn't even working or because it was actually affecting game performance. And then that was the direction that they went in was like, oh, well, we need to like fix this. I'm gonna wait for this one to pull up a little bit more. There we go. There's been some cases over the few years of games getting or game guard getting pulled from games yeah and the thing is is that like i was looking at it and like game guard like even though game guards used on a lot of games it's not very popular for an anti-cheat software like a lot of it's just like gotcha games and stuff like that like this is the only first person or third person shooter that i've seen that uses uh that uses that specific anti-cheat software If I'm not mistaken, at least that's what I saw so far when I was looking at it. I've had a lot of people comment and, and ask me on it, and, and I, I just gave them the straight up answer of, you know, I don't really know enough about anti-cheat software or kernel level anti-cheat software. So that was the main reason why I haven't really talked about it in any of my videos, because 
I'm not going to talk about something that I have no no knowledge of. Um, I feel like I'd be doing a disservice to my myself, my content, and also the people that watch my videos if I were to start talking on something or try to pretend to have an opinion on something I don't actually have an opinion on. I think largely that is one of the biggest, most uh, uh, aggravating things that we have in society today. Uh, is a lot of people getting angry about things that they don't actually know anything about or actually give a shit about. I would imagine I have some people here that would probably agree with that. Also, pretending to be outraged just doesn't have... It just doesn't hit the same. You know what I mean? It just doesn't hit the same. At least you guys can tell. When I am... When I'm mad, I am mad. Hmm... <laughs> Right in there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Couldn't draw that up any better. Oosh. Pretty much everyone's a critic uh, and about things they don't care about. Yeah. Don't know about or care about. Yeah, basically. Like, if I'm going to get mad about stuff or I'm going to be like have a pointed discussion on something, it's going to be because it's something that I actually do want to see change, something that I don't believe in. Or something like that. Reloading. Uh, how is how were none of those headshots? I really I feel fucking cheated. actually feel cheated how does that not hit this is so fucking sick dude i just love that i love their level design and map design so much like this genuinely feels like we're like raiding this enemy base and i fucking dig it Did our grenades just hit each other's? Did we just touch tips? Sample collected. Collecting sampies. What is that? What is this? God damn it! God, I didn't know. Did I walk right past the I thought that was just an ammo thing. It feels like Battlefront 2. It does feel like Battlefront 2. Getting them samples, boys. Just getting them samples.
Kernel level, kernel level anti-cheat seems to be the most common now. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's common. Um, it's common now because there's so many anti-cheat so or so there's so much cheat software that is operating at the kernel level. And now you even have like AI software that is operating like outside of the layers of protection, like to the point where it can't actually be detected. It's so weird, dude. Like, but there's such a market for cheating. There's such a market for cheating. You have to keep in mind, like there's people that quite literally make a living off of being cheaters. There are people that for sure are streamers and YouTubers that make content and that content is very much them trying to be at like the top levels of, com of competition and the only way that they can stay up there is by using cheats even if they are like skilled players it doesn't matter they have to do something to compete they have to do something to be able to to uh try to maintain that position you know what i mean Because the thing is, is like, if you're not doing it, so the other guy is for them. Like, I get it for like the fucking, uh, oh my God. These fucking bots. Seeing skilled Call of Duty players being caught cheat cheating on Twitch is so satisfying. It's so, but it, the funny thing, like it happens so regularly. You know what I mean? Like genuinely, it happens so fucking regularly now. You know, the same thing can be said for like view botting as well. Like, just, like, cheating in general when it comes to, like, online, um... Cheating in general when it comes to online, like, competitive games. Uh, uh. I don't know how many samples... That dude's been kind of running rogue, so I don't know how many samples he has. Holy shit, there's so many enemies here. You know what? Fucking rocket boy. I think I, I'm gonna. I think this dude's trying to go get his shit. Did they call for extraction already? Oh, he's going for his supplies. Did you get your shit? Uh, there have been caught COD pros that were caught on Twitch for cheating. Yes, there's tons of tons of them. Tons, and honestly, there's probably even more than you even know. Um, people that you probably would never suspect that are that are cheating in some way, shape, or form that are. But you got to think about it, man. Like, if, if you're talking about like if this is your livelihood on the line, and the the landscape changes where there's all these like fucking cheaters that start streaming, and that's how they get big. Those are people that are actively taking away from the money that you you could be making. And I think that like in a lot of cases, people are probably gonna be like, oh, well these, you know, these big streamers make enough, but it's not even the big streamers we're talking about. There's a there's like the like the like top 0.01% of people on Twitch make like tons of money. 
Uh, and even and there's even still people that are within that top top zero one percent that are really only making like thirty or forty thousand thirty thirty or forty thousand dollars a year. Um, the guys that are making like millions and millions are even uh, is an even smaller subset of the of that. Like, there are people that can make absurd money for making content online, but the vast majority of people are not making that much. Even the ones that do it for as a uh, even the ones that are doing it for a you know long term job, in many cases are not are not making a whole lot of money. I can tell you that as somebody that has like, I mean, I, I'm a small YouTuber, so it's like moderate success more than anything else. But I'm seeing, I see how the money scales, and now I, now I'm sitting here realizing, oh yeah, no, yeah, most people probably aren't making very much money doing this at all. Like there are those outliers, and the thing is, is that because they have so much of the attention span, are are so much of the not attention span, but like the market of attention is on them a lot because they are the big streamers then people kind of assume that like most people that are doing this kind of a gig are making a, like a shitload of money, but that's just not, that's just not the case. Not the case. take your word for it yeah i mean it, it, it's kind of hard to explain because i can't go into like specific numbers or anything like that that's not a professional thing to do but yeah to be honest with you like i would imagine that most people um especially if they are strictly on twitch if they're strictly on twitch and they have like i don't know let's say a thousand a thousand viewers at a time like those guys are probably making like I don't know, like a decent wage. They're probably making like 70,000 plus a year. Could be more. Depends on the person. It also depends on like how people are engaging with their content across the board. That's the other thing too. Depends on if they have people that are like donating a lot. People are subbing that are a lot. People like it depends on if they have like a lot of uh, like a lot of sponsors and stuff. There's all kinds of different stuff, but Either way, like, of course, you're going to see cheating become like really prevalent in a get in, you know, whatever, whatever game, because at the end of the day, if you have a bunch of other people that are stepping into your work, you have to you have to do the same, basically, because if you don't, then you're just going to get left behind. They're just going to take whatever viewership you have because they look better than you and they're probably dunking on you and uh, um, dunking on you in matches and stuff or making clips of them killing you and shit. Yeah, like, yeah, that's how it works. Liberty's enemies move ever closer. Engaging orbital thrusters. Orbit synchronized. But the onus is on these companies to figure out some way to combat it. I guess one of the things that's happening now, or something that's becoming a little bit more prevalent, is that you're seeing a lot of people, like a lot, or not, uh, you're... Like now there's this movement into there's this move into like AI cheat software. So now there has to be AI fuck this is all the way over here. Um so we go here, 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 and then here. So, <clears throat> so yeah, like the thing is like now it's just, it's just become an arms race when it comes to cheat software, where you have companies that are trying to make, now people are trying to make AI, uh, like AI generated anti-cheat is going to be the next big move. So it's going to be able to like detect 
what the what the AI would consider as like unnatural movements or unnatural things happening in the game. But I mean, that's going to be that's probably going to be a whole level of hell that we're just not ready for because there's some players that are out there that play legit, but very unnaturally. You know, one of the first people, one of the first people I look at for that would be like Shroud. Like, Like, I've watched Shroud for years, and I mean, the shit that that dude does is fucking crazy. There's some shots that he pulls off sometimes, and I'm just like, what even is that? God damn, we jumped into the shit on this one, huh? Fucking fighting the bots really is like this game's version of Nom. I missed that. God damn. I'm pinned down over here. I am pinned down. Pick that up. There we go. Oh, I guess we should, uh, I guess we should go there first. I don't think I can do anything about these guys other than kind of come from behind here. I'll grab his supplies though. Fuck yeah. Fuck him up. Okay, we're gonna go B4 first. Oh, we gotta go get we gotta go get fucking L1 too. I guess me and this guy are gonna go for L1. I mean we gotta clear these guys out, man. Uh Oh, I thought I brought the laser and I didn't. 
Oh, the wrong one. Oh, he pulled the other group. Shit. All right, good kill, dog. Good kill. All right, let's move up. Let's move up, homie. We got this. They both got killed at the exact same time. I wonder what killed them. I really hope they don't nerf the breaker. You know, one of the things that I'm not a huge fan of in uh, in video games, I don't know if you guys feel the same way as me. Maybe maybe you'll tell me I'm wrong. I'm not a big fan of nerfs. I like to see buffs. Like, I don't feel like the breaker is like busted by any means. Like, it's good, but I think it's just good in comparison to other weapons. If the other weapons were brought up, then I think everything would feel better. Um, like, I, I hope they don't think that like, just making the breaker less good is gonna be the solution to you know, balancing weapons and stuff. That's, you know, one of the things I'm always afraid of when it comes to these games. He's good over here. It's a PvE game. Why would they have to nerf a lot anyway? I, dude, here's the thing. I've played plenty of PvE games where they've done that kind of stuff in the past. So, uh, really good example of this. Really good example of this. Um, um, Borderlands. Borderlands was notorious for that shit. It pissed me off. We used to have all these like, uh, like, uh, uh. Some of the weapons in the game had some really cool interactions with passives and, and skill trees and stuff. And they just go through and fucking nerf. They never buffed. They never buffed. Alright, let's go get your guys' shit. We go through the middle... I guess this is the fastest way. There's water there. Be careful. Uh, I get nerfs in PvP games, PvE games. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. But, oh, shit. But, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that I always get nervous about when it comes to games like this because um, sometimes sometimes that's the direction that they go and I, I wish that wasn't the direction that they go. But I do, but at the exact same time, in the same breath, like try to keep in mind too, that um, there's like, like ammo and shit isn't working the way that it's supposed to. Like there's no armor pen. Like there's only like light armor pen. Is there anything that has medium armor penetration or heavy armor penetration? I don't think there is. Like, I mean, I can understand it if something is just that fucking broken. And sometimes that shit can happen. I mean, sometimes there are weapons that are in a game that are just not working the way that they're intended to. But I don't feel like the, I don't feel like the breaker is not working as intended. I feel like the breaker works as it's supposed to. I just feel like the other weapons don't. Liberator Penetrator. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I've tried the Penetrator. It fucking sucks.
What are we supposed to be doing here? Oh, launch codes. tank hopefully arrowhead keeps giving players what they want instead of taking stuff away say yeah yeah no, i 100 percent agree 100 percent agree I just feel more times than not some of these some of these studios don't really think like that, but I don't think that Arrowhead's one of those studios. I don't think they are, to be honest. Especially with the like the way that I like I've kept up with um with their CEO and a couple other people that they have for their studio that have been kind of like tweeting and stuff like that. I need to get involved in their Discords too. Because I feel like there's a lot of really good information in the Discords and I'm not really keeping track of that kind of stuff. Got your bag, dog. Don't even worry about it, homie. Man, you walk right past that sample. I, do, you know what the other thing is? I will say this. What I really have been enjoying about playing this game is that like I've had the itch to play a shooter. I just don't feel like playing a competitive shooter because I'm not bad at shooting games. I've, I actually have pretty solid aim games that have movement and stuff like that. I'm pretty good with, um, but uh, I I just don't really feel like playing competitive shooters. Uh, what is it? Five, four, Eight, seven, nine. There's more over here. I bet it's one of those fucking ATATs. Oh, there's some samples over here. Samp samples? Anybody got some samples? Uh, let's do this. Oh, that's a blue. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll see if a um We'll see if anything good pops up. Get up on this bitch.
raid him. Love to see it. Overlaid is oh, okay. all right. Never mind. Uh, you know what? We will actually. Oh, that's a support weapon. We don't want that. Oh, I guess it's not really necessary anymore. So addicted, so addicted to, to grenade launcher supply pack. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't tried the grenade launcher yet. The minute I saw the game had a railgun, I was like, let's fucking go. I love these like charger weapons and stuff where you can like kind of take aim and fucking. Norski. I swear to God. How did I not hit him? Whoa. Uh, okay. I do have something to take care of this. Please. Oh, that's an eagle. Ah, whatever. That'll still work. Oh, there's two of them. Oh my god, I'm surrounded. Fuck. Uh, alright, 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 alright. Okay. I think I handled that like a fucking G. I think I handled that like a fucking G. Personally. I did not handle that shot like a G. That one I did. Got him. All right, we're out of here. This motherfucker going for a swim, huh? <laughs> Somebody has a rocket launcher. Holy shit, there's a whole look at all those dudes up there. Dropship where? Is it right on top of us? I swear to fucking god. Alright, we need to regroup. We gotta get going. We can't be over here right now. This shit's too wild over here. We need to get back with the homies. Holy shit. Look at that fucking hillside. Uh, I don't have anything for it. What is... What? Oh. Fuck off.
What even hit me? What even hit me? I like how I, t I took out the one guys and then all of a sudden another one just appears. Like an even bigger one. What the fuck? Rockets. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Okay. Okay. I think I'm safe. This is when I blow up. I know they called in a hell bomb, so I'm not going to go over there. Uh, we still got to go south. Why? I don't know why that dude took off. We're fucking kicking ass. Except for this part. This part kind of sucks. Get some! Bro, this is like a fucking... This is a fucking war right now. Holy shit. Where's that fucking resupply? I'd like to know that. Oh, it's right behind me. I heard it come in. Alright, it's time to push forward, boys. I think we're pretty clear. I did like the auto cannon. I was running that for a little bit. Fuck me in the ass! Oh shit. I'm scared. Oh, I didn't reload. Every time I see one of those big boys come around the side, I'm like, oh shit. Did you unsafe? Of course I unsafe my. Yes, it is unsafe. Do we have to? We have to go this way. It's gonna be the fastest way for us to get there at the very least. Eagle one one. Eagle one one. I didn't hit anything with that. Okay. I was trying to get on the other side of the wall because I thought other other enemies were back there, but I guess not. There were. I hear their asses screaming at me. Oh, where I'm from. Holy shit!
I didn't even know this thing was here. Jesus Christ. That was an awesome tag with that air support. Absolutely fucking legendary toss there. Is rocket launcher going to do anything? Jesus Christ, what is that? Oh, it's a fucking... Got something for that. No, I don't actually. Called in the wrong thing. Got, we got we got a fucking boogie woogie. We got to get out of here. Got to get out of Dodge. Jesus Christ, there's so many. Oh my God. Fuck. Oh. Jesus Christ. This game is so unforgiving. I got you, big dog. Bringing you in. I don't know. I don't. I wish I had another fucking. That was close. Holy shit! I went the wrong way. <laughs> Fuck, that grenade launcher did so much work right there. That dude fucking absolutely saved our ass. Fucking two for ones, hell yeah. Oh my god, he almost got himself annihilated there. Why did you... I should have flicked over to him. That was my fault. We're running. We don't need to engage these guys. We need to, oh my fucking god. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely there. It's definitely there. Yeah, we're getting out of here, Mission Command. We're getting out of here.
I gotta start bringing a support weapon. Or not a support, but a, uh, I need to start bringing in um, some type of artillery. Or not artillery. What the fuck am I thinking? Like a uh, sentry. Centuries are just so damn good right here. You guys see that rocket go right past my head? I need to get some resupply. I know I saw him drop it. I don't know where he put it though. There we go. There's a uh, little, little mushroom over here. Bring it on down, Pelican One. Eagle one leaving combat zone to resupply. Pelican one preparing to That was a good mission. That was a good mission. I don't think the shield is that beneficial. Only works as well as uh pick up a stratagem slot. So I do <laughs> You wanna know why I uh One of the reasons why I take it, uh, I take it specifically because I uh, I step in front of my teammates a lot, and it keeps me from getting my brains blown out by my teammates. Literally, just that keeps me safe from my own teammates. Keeps me safe from myself. <laughs> it keeps me safe from myself. I can't tell you how many times I've walked in front of teammates while they're firing a weapon. I mean, they do it to me all the time, but I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good about being able to stop shooting when somebody steps in front of me. Stay back, then? Nah, dog. Uh, -uh. I'm an action, I'm an action hero. I don't know what you're talking about. That's not how this works, okay? That's not how this works. Doesn't keep you safe from me, though. No shit. Yeah, not when you like hit me with a grenade launcher in the back. Man, we're losing Vandellian 4. All these samples will help fund upgrades to the Super Destroyer. Helldiver, glad to have you. I want more ships too, by the way. Like, I want to have like different ships. That's one of the cool things that I always liked about Destiny was like getting cool ships and stuff like that. Did you lose one person? I, I don't know. They just like quit midway through the match. Maybe I'll just save up for page seven. I haven't even started the premium pass. I think this looks fucking sick though. I'm sorry. I just think this looks fucking sick. Where'd it go? I think this looks sick. You can't tell me that doesn't look good. Oh. Oh, it looks so good.
I mean the 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 spot the spots are open. I'll generate I'll generate another um I'll open it up. Give me a moment. Uh actually let me take a fucking wild guess. It shows me the two of my friends are online, but if I had to take a wild guess, if it's them, they are not playing it. What is predecessor? What the fuck? I've never even heard of that game before. In an era where worlds collide, are born. legends are born. This looks so stupid. Third, oh, it's a MOBA. Are those uh, capris on your guy? What? Don't be talking shit, dog. Don't be talking shit. I'll generate a new friend code and I'm putting it into the Discord right now. Eight nine. There you go. New friend code in the Discord. Get on it. Get on it. What's in the superstore right now? That's actually a really good point. I think I have to stay on the friend screen or it's going to generate another code. If I'm not mistaken. What was that noise? New subscriber. Odds at ends. Thank you for the sub, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, great job on the Helldivers 2 content. Love seeing you getting uh, the very well-deserved views. Love your content. Thank you, Odds. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Another Helldiver 2 video tomorrow, actually. Another Helldiver 2 video tomorrow. I need to see if I can try to... Uh, um, so, like, one of the things that I always set out to try to do when I got into YouTube was... Um, uh, you know, trying to make... You know, trying to make... Trying to make friends and stuff like that. You know what I mean? For, 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 for friends and whatnot. Um, and I think one of the cool ways to do that is actually to like, you know, cross over with other, um, cross over with other content creators. And I think, um, I'm just going to try to reach out to some of, uh, some of the other, try to punch up to some of the other content creators in uh in the sphere I sent the request. Friend requests. Accept. Accept. There you go. Two of you guys have been accepted. Oh, that's cute. I should have, uh... stuck around so I'm gonna keep him uh man if I wasn't at work I'd be helping to spread democracy well isn't that what we're all out here to do I probably only have like uh maybe one more in me to be honest uh
Uh, find you, but I found you from a Final Fantasy video that feels like years ago. From a Final Fantasy video that feels like years ago. My first, I think my first three videos that I ever made on on this channel were, uh, last year. Not last year. It was so. I mean, it was a year ago, over a year ago, uh, in December. And one was. Both of them were about Final Fantasy 16, and then another one was like Final Fantasy versus World of Warcraft. Super fucking cringe. Honestly, like I was going back and I like the other night I was watching like some of my older videos. It is astonishing how much better I am at this with just a year of practice. It is like I'm act I'm genuinely it's one of those things where I am proud. I'm really proud of myself. I really am. I really am proud of myself. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 isn't your Final Fantasy. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah I remember that. Yeah, it, it's uh, like my writing has gotten so better. My voice, my production quality, my the way that I pre like the way that I present things, um, how I talk, my cadence, literally all of it. It's like a whole different person. The funny thing is, is that you can also see as well is that if you go back then, like I was a very sweet talker. I swear, like so it would be like Final Fantasy 14 is going to be this next expansion is going to be really good. And I think that people are really going to like it. And then now I've gone from that. And maybe this is just me getting jaded by Diablo 4. But now you listen to me and I'm like, fuck these triple A motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's so much more strength uh, behind my uh, there's so much more strength behind my uh uh, the way that I present things. Uh, I'd say keep going. I'm rooting. Uh, I'm rooting for the growth of your channel. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey. Did you put a quarter in? There ain't no free plays here. No pressure. It's your time to shine. Jesus Christ, you're an embarrassment. I'm sending I'm sending you back to civilian life. The hour of our Did you just say it was an embarrassment? <laughs> Norsky was, he failed. Uh a thousand percent. F these triple A devs are kind of out of touch. Yeah, that's true. Uh, developing your narrative style. Yeah, it's something like that. Something like that. Uh, let's see here. Um, we've almost taken back this one. Let's uh, let's do it. We'll, we got a defense. We can do. We'll do a couple of these. There's a defense mission. One more, and then I'll probably hop off because I'm home. Because I'm hungry. Because I'm hungry. Uh, of course, I fail when you're staring at me. I get performance anxiety. I am getting hangry. I am. I don't know what I'm going to have. What did I have last night? I think I had sandwiches. I think I had sandwiches last night. I wish I had soup. Like, soup sounds really good for some odd reason. We'll give it a second and see if anybody else joins. Where's the actual defense place? Is it right here? Ramen? I fucking love ramen. I guess nobody's coming to help. Oh, it's limited. We only got three slots. Okay. All right. This is what I'm taking then. Oh, wait. I'll take uh, radar, I guess. Does anybody have stamina? I don't have the stamina. That's fine. 
It's not super necessary. I need to save up and get it though. Final Fantasy 16 makes 10. Final Fantasy 16 takes 10% Attack on Titan, 10% Game of Thrones, 10% Final Fantasy, 10% Kingdom Hearts, 10% Witcher 3, and does not push uh, either to the diamond edge of the graph on these topics. Hence being extremely boring and bland, erasing Final Fantasy's identity, skills, and magic ability. Now you preface that with in my opinion. I liked Final Fantasy 16. I had a blast playing it. Do I think it's the best Final Fantasy game ever made? No. Do I think they should make another Final Fantasy game like it? No. But that doesn't mean it was necessarily a bad game. I brought the wrong shit to this, by the way. I picked the wrong thing. I thought I took the defense mission. Did I not? No, I guess I did not. Nice. Nice. And then killed by Norski. I don't even know what he killed me with. Oh, it was Norsky. I think I got killed by his, like, his turret. Uh, let's see here. Um, so I guess we just need to, uh, we gotta take these out. I didn't bring anything other than turrets because I thought we were doing a defense mission. And I'm not, I'm not going to pull, I'm not going to pull out the, uh, I'm not going to pull out the, whatchamacallit until the end anyway. Like I have a, I have a mortar, but I'm not going to use that in the middle of this. It's just going to be stupid. I'm just going to lead to getting us killed. But I can use the auto cannon. Shit, that got rocketed. Tank, watch out. Freedom forever. Reloading. Calling down a sentry. Requesting sentry. Fuck off. Get out of here.
we go. Ow. Jesus Christ. Nice cup of liberty. Got a sample. Samples. Dropping a pin. Northwest. I guess I'll take this out, yeah. Coming. Got it. Let's see here. Uh, I brought impact grenades too, so I don't even think I can even kill any. I don't, I don't think I can even do anything about these guys. Why is bro yapping? I. No idea. I need a fucking Setting out an SOS. Oh, I never grabbed the resupply. Oh well. It is what it is. I don't think that works. I... Furious, I don't think anybody's arguing with you, man. I don't, I don't know. Uh... I, I'm not really sure who you're arguing with. Fucking ammo. We're still jammed. Anyway, there's one of these guns here too.
Where is it? I don't even know where the... Oh, there it is. The jamming station's over there. We can't even call in reinforcement. We got to get that other station. Okay, there's that. Damn it, Norski. You just had to. Well, let me. Got a fucking mortar. Destroy your departure. Oh, we're already out of time. We got to take out that other facility and get the fuck out of here. I didn't realize the time limit was so low on this. We need to get the fuck. We need to bug out, boys. I don't think we're gonna make extraction, but we can try. At the very least, we can try. Hold on, we're leaving somebody behind. We leave no man behind. Come on, Thunder. Uh, figuring out for yourself the only freedom anyone really has. Anyone, I guess, who said it? No. I don't want to guess. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm so hungry. I swear to God, I picked the defense mission when we came here, but whatever. Brought it. We ain't got no stratagems. At least we'll be able to get out of here. So why exactly does our super destroyer have to leave orbit? I was wondering what the like what the lore is behind the timer. Is it like refueling or what? That's true. Oh, you thought you were going to flare, bitch. You ain't flaring shit. Oh, it is from Star... Some troopers. Is it from, like, when they're in training? Is it from when they're in training, like when they're still in class?
Oh, I'm realizing now there's a really good chance that... So sometimes I notice this on YouTube. Is it like people will pop into chat and they'll say some stuff? And they're actually further behind in the stream. They're not like caught up with the stream. So they're like chatting, but their chat is like off timing, if that makes any sense. Now, I just had that realization. I'm like, why are they talking about Final Fantasy 16? I'm like, we, I forgot we talked about that earlier on in the video or earlier on in the stream. Before training. Oh, oh, when they're trying to decide, Colonel says it. Okay. Mission accomplished and quickly too. The Regalia is coming back to Final Fantasy 14 tomorrow. I already have the Regalia. Of course I already have the Regalia. I have most of the I think I have most I yeah, I do have most of the mounts. I have the Sabatender and a couple of other things as well. The eradication missions have the same symbol. I did not know that. I did not know that. I need to get the regalia for my alts. Alts? Why would you have alts in Final Fantasy 14? You can server hop, you can change jobs on the fly. Oh god. Oh god. I mean, I guess, yeah, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Um... Actually... That's gonna be the last one for me. I gotta get some food in me. I meant to stream a little bit earlier. I was gonna stream for like six hours today, but um, I'm cutting it off a little short because I'm starved. So I wanna get some food and chill out. I got a little bit of writing to do. I gotta catch up on some other info. I gotta, I got some other articles and stuff like that that I gotta read as well. Uh, so I can prep a video that'll come out tomorrow. And then, uh, and then I will, uh, I'll, I might actually do like a later stream tomorrow, maybe. I might do a later stream tomorrow. Or something like that. I don't know. I might do like a late stream where I'm just like, just gaming. Or something like that, maybe. I'm not really too sure. We'll kind of figure it out. Well, you know, we just kind of take it as it comes for the most part. We just kind of go with the flow around these parts. You know what I mean? Do what you do. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get off. I'm going to get myself some food. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for the memberships. Thank you for the subscriptions. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for everything that you guys do to keep me doing what I do. So I really appreciate it. And I will be seeing you guys tomorrow. Well, you'll see me in a video tomorrow. So yeah, stay cool. Stay righteous. Stay safe, my friends. And I will see you in the next.